Hello, everybody. I'm Ian Gibson. It's Thursday. It's 9 p.m. Eastern. We've got a lot of uh, visitors to... I was going to say please, but it's... Can't say kill. Can't say kill. <laughs> Will, what are you going to do to our visitors? I'm going to uh, lather them up with soap. Uh, okay. It's nope. Not, it's not nope. that kind of theme park, Will. Oh, uh, Kyle, sorry. what kind of, what kind of theme park, park is it? What are we doing to our visitors? You know, we're just trying to give them a good time for a oh, reasonable price oh boy. while only mm. nearly killing them. Okay, it got better at the end, but good time, probably not a great start. <laughs> Jake, you know. your last shot. We got we to gotta get some new visitors. We killed a bunch last week. What are we doing to them? Not killing them. <laughs> That's what this the t-shirts is, say. This is why we lost visitors last week, guys. <laughs> we got to do better at this. Anyways, let's kick right over to it. We're playing... Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. I know you guys can't see it. Let me just show it to you real quick. I'm excited. How you guys been feeling in the absence since uh, last week? I've been playing a lot in my off time. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's I've just good. been wanting to play a lot in my off time. Um, I was thinking about making some tracks, but I decided not to. Oh my goodness, who made this air-powered... Is this yours, Will? Yeah. It's terrifying. So that i can't take credit for that because i watched a video on uh, and not out of like anything other than it popped up in my feed it's like this swedish or Chef. he's from the netherlands netherlands guy who does like these crazy uh roller coaster tycoon things i feel like it's the only game he owns so he just plays <laughs> it all the time and yeah. he he came up with that coaster as like if you're trying to get as many people and as much money as possible like you mm -hmm. build that coaster, but not that exact coaster because I watched that video about a week ago and I remembered it. And so I think this is what it looks like. Gotcha. But I'm not 100% sure. It looks pretty um, he bonkers. Also he also built like these half pipe ones um, for like to make the most um, like the smallest ones. And then he also did a a park with only the virtual uh you know like the star tours thing because it's the least sprite count so he get the most guests oh the star tours because i think i think i may have seen the same one the video where he tries to get the most guests period and he does the vr stuff yeah yeah those those things with the with the weird things yeah. that's that's actually the video i watched when i was trying to figure out what is the maximum number of guests yeah that, that we can have in a park crazy he's very cool he's pretty cool you're pretty cool thanks babe you're welcome that's welcome what i'm here for um uh so what have you guys been up to in the uh, previous weekos well, you know just hanging out Hi, stream mom. Hi, stream mom. I've just been trying to get my mail out of my mailbox. You've been oh, trying that's... to get your mail out of the mailbox? Yeah, I, let's see I had that's to tweet story. at USPS, so. Yeah. What happened? So, like a week and a half ago, we noticed that the key, we have like a communal mailbox on our curb. Mm -hmm. um, and we noticed that the key to our mailbox was no longer like it wouldn't go in all the way so we couldn't you know get in and then um, like the next day we noticed that the little locking mechanism was actually protruding a bit um, mm -hmm. and so we called the USPS 1-800 number and there was no like logical like hey please press 1 if you want to do this and 2 if you want to do that there was no logical means to get to a place where you could say my mailbox is broken please come fix it so then we called the local usps office um, which had like a local area code and everything and they, they just never picked up it would <laughs> ring for like five minutes and then it would just wow. hang up and there was no way to like leave a voicemail or anything so we wrote we hand wrote a note and taped it to the mailbox and that day the note vanished and then a shiny, what we thought was a new lock, showed up there, but then it wouldn't accept the key that we had. So we think either somebody just like pushed it back in and polished it up a little, or they put a new one on and didn't give us a new key for it. 
So we're going to wow. have to go into the physical USPS office to try to solve this and hopefully get like a week's worth of mail. Wow. Which you got, I don't know if you've been to the post office lately, but it's kind of a nightmare right now with the coronavirus. I'm, I'm imagining that it's going to be a terrible experience. Yeah. Ours has like literally like clear uh, curtain liner, like shower curtain liner up in front. Mm -hmm. And they have like signs like, you know, hey, no more than six people in the lobby, but it's just swarmed with people all the time. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to it. Um, hi, stream mom. I feel like I already said that, but it, it deserves to be said multiple times. <laughs> hi, stream mom. Hi, stream mom. It does look different than last time. Oh, the park. Yeah, that does. Too. Um, so, uh, what have you guys been playing? Let's go around the horn. Let's kick it off with. Uh, <laughs> Crap, I'm at the top. I've been playing a lot of SnowRunner. But I think I've tired of that. I'm I'm actually in a weird spot right now where I, I kind of want to play video games, but I'm just too... I don't know what to buy. I mean, to play. I think maybe I'll play some Arkham Knight because I did get that recently. So I haven't been playing a whole lot. What about you, Jakey Boy? You been, what have you been playing? Um... I bought, I think I said it last week, I bought Void Bastards, but I still haven't played it. Um, this week was kind of heavier workload-wise than others, so I don't think I really played much of anything, except I did a couple more of the Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 campaign mm -hmm. levels. I think I did like five or six of them. Um, but I don't know if I've played much else beyond that. Oh, I've, ooh, no, I played a lot of Destiny over the mo the long weekend because um, I haven't played much this season and so I was catching up. Uh, what about you, uh, Kyle? What you been playing? Warzone. Uh, I tried to play... Or No, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Warzone and Star Citizen. Been oh. Trying to, trying to get into Star Citizen. Oh, how is that? Is, is that real? It, it it's um us it's it's a game technically <laughs> it fulfills the requirements <laughs> yep um I, I mean it's interesting i'll say that it is extremely annoying like everything breaks it will work sometimes and then it will oh, break wow and like i literally got lost in a cave for 45 minutes trying to find a guy who I ended up finding out did not exist uh, because the game just didn't load him in and the community online is actually super helpful like there's in-game chat for whatever server that you're in and you can always ask a question and people will be like this is how you take off this is you have to you know contact the port or the the uh, whatever you know satellite or port structure you're in you have to like ask, hail them to say mm -hmm. you're taking off or you can just or you can just take off and they'll get angry at you um, so it's like realistic to a fault where yeah. like you have to eat and I hate mechanics like that where it's Wait like, a minute. Uh, like there's like survival mechanics in this. Yes, you have a hydration rating that goes down from 100 and a health slash food rating and an oxygen rating. So like I get the oxygen rating because if you're what? out of space, you're going to need that. It's crazy. And I got sent to prison. Uh, and I had to escape prison because Space prison? I, yes, I okay, so I did a mission where I had to go aboard this huge like luxury liner spacecraft and there were like 20 guys that I had to kill. Well, there's no indication of who is a bad guy and who is a good guy or that there are even good guys on board. I just assumed they'd taken over this ship and were trying to like hijack it or something. So me assuming everyone I see is bad immediately unloads onto like the first three people that I see and immediately it says mission failed uh, you killed some security force Ugh. and I was I was like are you kidding me because I, you had to like you had to fly like 30 million kilometers to get to this spaceship yeah. you had to jump out of your ship EVA suit into the other ship and like 
it, it's the mechanics are there like it seems like it should be working but then none of the none of the extraneous mission stuff that's like normal in other video games where it's like here's a waypoint here's a good guy here's a bad friendly fire is definitely on friendly fire is definitely off like it doesn't tell you any of that stuff so you just have to assume yeah. and it's like oh i'm sorry i didn't realize the bad guys were dressed like mad max characters and not normal people in space um so i got sent to prison for that for homicide in a certain sector and then you <laughs> Because it was such a serious offense, I had to spend six hours in prison in real time. Oh my god! And you can, you can lessen that by mining, and you bring the 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 stuff that you mine to this. You know, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like it. It looks just like a big box, and you deposit it mm -hmm. into the box, and it lessens your sentence. Well, I did that. Like I mined like one rock, and it brought me down by an hour. I was like, okay, well, I'll just mine you know, five other rocks. So I mined five other rocks and then it only brought me down by 20 minutes. Uh -huh. And I said, screw this. I'm turning this game off. And I turned it off and I did some research and you can escape from prison. So I went and did the entire escape from prison thing, which takes like 20 minutes and it's full of precarious jumps and you have to, you know, like make sure you don't die and go the right way. It's all these twists and turns. Mm -hmm. You get up to the surface on, of this planet and it's like, it's like 300 degrees outside and you're in like a little prison suit. Uh, so you die unless you can have someone pick you up or you know the code that you should have taken a picture of five minutes before getting out of oh the little God. crevice that you climb out of. And it's like, you can get a Rover. And of course the servers weren't working. So my one friend that I've been playing with couldn't pick me up because we weren't we weren't able to talk to each other or see each mm -hmm. other. So I did all that and, and ended up up dying and got sent back to then because I tried to escape they added back on an, uh, another hour and a half I ended up having to spend six and a half hours in prison amazing this yeah this game sounds like the definition of feature creep like it's oh boy it's it, well, it's been in development for like nine years I think its budget is over a hundred million now it's crazy yeah with all yeah. the donations that they've got I will say there's something about it that just makes me want to keep playing and i i don't know if that's the the wish fulfillment thing of one wanting to be able to do the things that i'm actually able to do in game but also wanting a game that allows me to do the things it says it will let you do mm -hmm. it says like we will be able to do this when development's finished which could be 10 years from now and it's mm -hmm. like yeah I, I want that to be true, so I just keep playing and playing in the hopes that it will be true. But like right now, it's just, it's so rough and stuff doesn't work. You're supposed to be able to share missions with people and it just doesn't work. You can link up in a party with someone and then you won't be able to see them or like, uh, it, it just gets ridiculous. And they update it constantly. Like every other day is like a one gigabyte update. And it, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's frustrating, but when it works, it's like I I can see how this would be a lot of fun if it was like this all the time. But that's like five percent of your experience. So yeah, uh, it's rough. So yes, I've been playing Star Citizen. Wow, that's I, I think it's good to have that report in a way because uh, yeah, I I've been hearing things about it, good and bad. I know that uh, Zachariah Crispers, a uh, friend of the site has been trying for a while now to get us to play. Isn't that right, Will? It's him, right? Yes. Zachariah. Yes. I, uh, usually when there's like a free ship weekend, uh, Zach and I will jump in. Uh, a while ago, they had like the Serenity, the ship based off the Serenity uh, for free. So we played for like four hours just flying it into the abyss. Was that um, Wait. the Andromeda? Yeah, I think it's yeah. so. Yeah. Do they have licensed ships, or is it just like aesthetically similar? Uh, aesthetically similar. It has like the side engines. Yeah, sort of stuff. It's. I will say, they definitely put a lot of work into the design and function of the ships. Like you can actually have a multi-person crew on like that ship. Like you could, because mm -hmm. they have like a dual turret system, and everything looks great. The textures on some of the just some of the little details like you can really tell like they spent money on this they spent money and time on this but then there's other stuff where it's like oh i can't jump over a rock really? <laughs> like oh. like like a, like a stone and it just it's like the unevenness of that experience really wears on you i think but 
I just find myself like I was playing a little bit before we got on here and I was like trying to do one mission. And of course, I my ship exploded for no reason. Like you'll just be flying and your ship will just blow up. So that happens. Yeah, I follow a bunch of the concept artists um, art station accounts. And it's always the, the design of everything is really up my alley. I wish I had a computer that could handle it. Yeah, that's the other thing is I've got like I have a brand new graphics card and it sometimes runs at 60 but more often runs at like anywhere from 15 to 45 fps just mm -hmm. it'll just it it just doesn't know what it like what there's so many pop-ins when you first start and it chugs for like 10 minutes until everything's loaded in so pro tip save in your ship and load in your ship when you start a new game that way there's nothing around you but space and your ship so it loads a lot faster smart but if Zach plays it, uh, I would play with him. And if we want to do like a stream at some point, I would definitely be down for that. Even just to experience the bad parts. Because I'm chopped liver. Well, we could try to break out of prison together, which I think would be pretty fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with playing the game. I just don't want to pay for it. So yeah, they've had, I, yeah, they've just had free, free weekends weekend. before, right? Yeah. I think they had one this past weekend. Oh, uh, what's going on? I don't know. I wanna, Zach's the one who always like reminds me it exists because I think he still gets the emails. Because we we both signed up, um, right around the same time. I don't. Did it have a Kickstarter first? Yeah, they raised it was like, a, I think I yeah, like a crazy amount of money. Or something. So I, yeah. I, I want to say we signed up. I don't know. It must have been just after Kickstarter because we did it through the website. So it wouldn't have been the Kickstarter. Robert Space um, Industries. Mm. Yeah, and he every so often he'll be like, hey. You want to split like ninety dollars and upgrade to a cargo ship, and I'm like, yes, no. I do, Zach. But I will do that when it is a running video game. I promise. Yeah. But not yeah. right now when it is not a running video game. That's that's yeah. the thing about it is like, it has so much promise if you just go off the marketing copy, but I yeah. don't. But they, as far as I've seen, they have not really delivered on any of it. It feels like they keep yeah, adding features, but they don't actually polish any of it, and that's that's what I think. To me. I think that's exactly it. Where it's like they, it's sort of like it's sort of like No Man's Sky. What happened after No Man's Sky like came out? It's like that, but over an extended period of time. Where it's like it started out, it was like this game they said was going to be awesome, and it was super limited in actuality when it was released. And then over time, they've been adding more and more stuff. But it's like yeah. the, the amount of stuff that No Man's Sky, that Hello Games has added to No Man's Sky in mm -hmm. like the two years since or three years since the release. Four year it, anniversary is coming up. Four year anniversary. So like after that, like initial like few month period when everyone hated No Man's Sky and then they you know went to work adding everything. It's like that. But over the expanse of 10 years, <laughs> like they're just they're they just add stuff and people complain mm -hmm. and then they add other stuff that people haven't even thought to complain of and then never go back to it so jeez that just that just sounds so awful how did i do yeah. that where is it what'd you do buddy boy i built an information kiosk in the sky <laughs> by accident i don't i don't know how i did it I don't know if you want to come uh, see this, Ian. Over by that air-powered coaster, there's an information kiosk next to it, and at, from a certain angle, it looks like it's on the ground. Oh, yeah. From see, other angles, yeah, I've done that it's before clearly too. not. Yeah. All right, well, I'm just building my little coaster archipelago out here. Um, anything else you've been playing, Kyle, you want to shout out? Um, I tried playing. Let me see. I gotta go back to my Steam library. Oh, Halo 2. Uh, we've been trying Following to do the campaign Chief. on Halo 2 with my friend. Yep. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Except for we tried to beat the first level that you play, or the first or second level that you play as the Arbiter. We had to beat that mission like three times because every time we got to the end, that we had like a network issue and it just threw us both out and we had to start over because apparently it just doesn't save checkpoints ever wow. which is super frustrating yeah 
But other than that, no, I haven't really haven't really been playing anything. Uh, I'm trying to think of I've been playing some Warzone with y'all. Mm-hmm. Will, what have you been playing? Um, I have been playing a little bit of Kenshi off and on when I'm bored. I still don't know what Kenshi is. You keep saying that and I don't know what it is. You keep I, saying this I thought word. You, I thought you said mean. I thought you said kimchi. No, Kenshi, it's so you control the so there's this giant island world um full of people and it's a single player game and it's just full of people who don't care about you. You start as a person who is stupid and an idiot and you have no powers you're all at level Got it. So it's biographical. one or zero or Got negative it. on everything yep biographical <laughs> and basically uh you were just thrown into a world where you just have to start surviving so i like went off and started mining and then i eventually saved enough money to buy a house and then i saved enough money to hire other characters to join my clan wait a minute wait a minute and now minute. i have what style game is this like what is the game it's play? The gameplay is you controlling characters with the mouse. You click <laughs> around to make them. It's you click around to make them go to places. So it's like isometric. Um, Top down isometric. Uh, no, because you can. It's full 3D, so you can zoom in to the person. You can look around. You can follow one person. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, you can like zoom down on the person. It's basically Skyrim, but the camera can go anywhere, um, and it's third person. Um, and it's not Skyrim. So, yeah, I don't know how else to really explain it. It's fun, though. I'm having a great time with it. It, um... Whew. I, I finally started building my... So I have, like, 11 people in my clan, and so I can control each one of them, and you can also assign them to jobs. So if I, like, shift-click on a job... This guy will keep mining. He'll put the stone in a storage box and then he'll go get food when he's hungry. And if he's being attacked, he will alert me and he'll run back to the nearest town. So the town guards fight because my guys are at like 11 attack, but that's not very good. So they'll die. And if you you can lose limbs and then you have to buy uh, robotic limbs, buy new limbs. Um, I had a lady lose an arm, and so now I'm just waiting for the dealer, uh, this traveling salesman to come by so I can buy her a new arm so she can be back up to capacity. Um, and so I finally have enough stuff that I've saved up, and I'm building my own town now. And so people are building the town, but every time a giant horde comes to take the town away from me, I have everyone run back to the other town so all the guards fight. So I don't lose any people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot, you know. Will, can I be honest with you? What? S yeah. Still, still barely making sense to me, but it sounds great. Yeah, I know. It's basically The Sims, but punishing. Oh, okay. Like extremely, mm -hmm. extremely okay. punishing. See, now I get that. I get that. Yeah. Now see, I'm interested. I just thought of it, so sorry. But it honestly, it is, it is The Sims, but extremely punishing. Um and you can lose limbs. So that's fun, I've been playing that. And then, what else have I been playing? Uh, I've been playing a lot, but I bought a butt ton of games off of the GOG sale um, because everything, all these old games were like 99 cents or less. So, oh, so wow. I have a thing with- So you could with, afford it? Yeah. <laughs> Man, burn. Sorry, you <laughs> traveled to that the microphone team. for that one. That's a good COVID <laughs> joke. Like Man, um, so I feel bad now. <laughs> no, it's fine. I have a thing with GOG, and I'm like, if the game looks good and it's under, like, I'll pretty much buy anything under a dollar on there because most of them are just old games. Mm -hmm. I'd buy that for a dollar. Hey, I was waiting for the robot. After. <laughs> um, so I bought a bunch of games on there. Um, trying to think, I kind of fell off of Origins, mostly because I've. I've been on my computer. I've been playing a bunch of Warzone with y'all. Mm -hmm. And uh, today I started playing World of Warcraft again because I'm a, a monster masochist. So just a quick question um, on Warzone. Um, I want an anonymous estimate from everybody. You too, Jake. How many more okay. How many more streams will it take before we get 
our what do they call it in is it victory royale what do they call it in um war chicken dinner uh i think it's victory i'm trying to remember um, winning hold on so what's how many more streams let's go from uh will how many streams do you think till we get um it? at least 38 40. Ooh. No, I, I think I think maybe three three more. I'll say three more. Okay, Kyle. It's a complete lock. Kyle, how are you feeling? I was gonna say two or three. Okay. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with five. I think we're okay. we're settling into the groove. I wish I could remember how many Apex it took, but um I think we're settling into the groove, but we've still gotta have we finished we finished top ten a couple times, right? Yeah, I think the last time we played, we got, like, ninth. Mm -hmm. And I think we've done fifth or fourth before. So we're not we're not terrible, but we're also not great. So we just got to, like, you know, hang in there, put in the work, and get some luck as well. Because I, I do think we're at that point where a, a greater portion than most is down to luck. You know, do we get unlucky and have a squad come up on us that we could have had no idea was there? even though we were positioned properly. Are we lucky enough to get the right drops? Things like that. Mm -hmm. Where I think I think the more I think the better you get at the game, the more luck plays into it in a way. If that makes sense, like 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 luck is a bell curve. Like when you're first starting out, mm -hmm. luck doesn't matter because you're so bad at the game that even if luck goes your way, you're still going to lose. But then in the middle, it's about half and half. You have the skill to make it potentially if things break your way. But then when you get really good at the game, you can win even if your luck is against you. Whew, getting technical yeah, over here. I, I would I would agree with that. Also, they call it war zone victory at the oh. end. God. I never even really liked the Mom! chicken dinner that PUBG does. Mom, I got a war zone victory. Winner winner chicken dinner always in PUBG, it always felt like it was placeholder that they just left in. You know? <laughs> Yeah, could have been. yeah, I feel that way too, and it just kind of got like almost like Project Cars, yeah, or not Project Cars, uh, next car game. Yes, although they did eventually. I always felt like they got way too late. They changed it to uh, Wreckfest. Yeah, because they're idiots. Beam and G Drive is definitely one of those that I don't think was a placeholder. I think it was just a bad name that they never changed. Actually, yeah, because yeah, Halo if I'm not mistaken, Beam NG Drive is really weird. It's a it's a tech demo for the Beam NG physics system, which they are still trying to sell to developers. And then the tech demo ended up becoming a more popular game than the actual engine. <laughs> I, I was watching recently. They were saying Halo was the supposed to be the code name, but it got too popular for Beam NG Drive. Yeah, for Beam NG <laughs> Drive. Yeah. That's exactly right. As you know. That's just weird, because Halo's a good name. Yeah, I, I think it was Halo. Oh, I could be lying out my butthole. Yeah, keep on lying out that butthole, boy. La 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 butthole. Excuse me. All right, let me take care of Maggie. La 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 butthole. Stream Mom had a good, a good line. Punished Sims. That's pretty good. Punished Sims. That's the next yes. subpixel link. There's, um, here, I'll, I'll post the link to the video that got me into Kenshi. Will, do you want to say what, what's going on with Maggie? Because apparently she got you involved. Oh, yeah. yeah, Maggie has been messaging me. Um, uh oh. <laughs> she says, crying T underscore 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 capital T. Uh, the weird crying emoji thingy that it, it's not an emoji. It's what's it called when it's an ASCII emoji? It's called uh, a dead story because that's where we are right now. Uh, can tell Ian to send. I know I was trying to ruin it. Uh, can you tell Ian to send me my paper I'm working on? It's due this week. What the f u k k k k k k k j? Mm, too many k's. Then she sent a picture. Yeah. Right, I'll show this to the stream. Uh, not safe for work. Uh, it's just a picture of Ian at the chair at the and it says this ass hole <gasps> inappropriate uh, maggie pg13 um and then she wrote what the fried does he mean by i never should have allowed her on facebook <laughs> <laughs> what the fried 
Sorry, WTF. She um, wrote. Um, <laughs> she wrote aloud, all capitals, <laughs> and then lots of exclamation points, dollar signs, nines, hashtags, twos. There's some slashes in there. And then, Will, make him send me my paper. I'm pretending she's saying it now. So, j- and now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been playing not fail out of school, Mama. Really difficult with Ian here. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know either. Is that like cooking, Mama? I don't. But I, not I, fail I, out I of think, school, Mama. I think it's a bad cooking, Mama joke. So basically, so what happens is Maggie Maggie can use my computer, um, especially when I'm not using it. So like on the days when we're home, I'll I'll use the spare bedroom with my work laptop, and she'll use my computer. But she will not clean up after herself so the desk will be strewn with all these like used q-tips and textbooks and like and like teacups and all this crap and then she won't close any of her (laughs) windows or 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 save anything so i'll get on at like 8 50 which is 10 minutes before the stream is going to go live and i'm like i gotta get the stream set up so i just like throw all her stuff off i close all of her windows if it asks me to save then i'll save it but otherwise it's getting closed and I close everything, and then I go into the stream. And then she was like, but I need my paper. I didn't shave it. I need you to send it to me. And I'm like, too bad. <laughs> so uh, that's basically what that's about. I think I put this. Uh, I, I just put uh, the uh, Kenshi review in our Discord, and uh, I popped it in the restream chat if you folks. Subscribe to join our Discord if you're not joined on the Discord. Uh, yeah, what Jake said, but... By our Discord, I meant our personal one. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> well, join the community Discord yeah. and not don't see what confidential messages we're sending each other. <laughs> um, um, so we do have some gaming news to talk go. about, y'all. Do we? Yes, we do. Um, oh no, I hear somebody coming. Ma- Magatha? Was that you, Michael? Oh, I just watched. Man, it's saw her ghost in the it's background. Just, it's so creepy. It's like paranormal activity. I hear something. I hear. I make it can see you coming on the street. <laughs> okay, you want your files? Yes. Oh, she unblurred. Okay, so here's here's what's going on, folks. Heavy rumors. Conf- heavy rumors reported by several <laughs> good people. Several good journalists. It looks like Maggie's mixing a martini behind you. I think she's What's just, she doing? Is it Jasmine Flower? Jasmine Pout? What are you doing? Can they see me? Yeah, they can see you. Is that cocaine? It's cocaine. It's bath salts. Wow. Oh, oh she's you. making bath salts. Um, wait, the drug or the... You <laughs> eat your face. Whoa. <laughs> What's this paper, Maggie? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go... Okay, wait. Let me just get this out, and then you guys can talk on it. <laughs> Heavy rumors, several journalists reporting on this. June 3rd, next Wednesday, is the PS5 reveal event. You guys lead. What are you expecting to see? A PS5. I've heard some... I have heard some hot goss that Sega is going to have a presence, some sort of big presence at the PS5 event. A a next-gen Sonic game. Do you think they'll be rad? Yes. Sonic Adventures HD. Sonic 40. Ooh. The PS5 is going to shake you it's just gonna say it's just gonna say experience fast (laughs) yep um i'm gonna say would they possibly announce no i guess they wouldn't do it that that soon in front of me no i was gonna say would they announce the last of us 2 for the ps5 but that's kind of close to the release window to do it so i don't know yeah well because didn't it it came out for the PS3 it was like a and year the after remastered was yeah. on the ps4 yeah i think it's probably just implied <laughs> yeah 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 that's sort of what i would have assumed i don't know there's, there's got to be some sort of maybe um didn't sony just start a new uh playstation studio right or they bought somebody I don't... no they there's re- like an, they there's re-branded. like, I think there's a like an official yeah would oh yeah they rebranded from... That Sony movie? Computer Entertainment to be yeah. something else. Their new first yeah, person or first party. I don't know if you guys have been following, but they're yeah, they just brought everything under. They're a kind brand. of in a weird state yeah. right now. They've been doing a lot of reshuffle. They've been losing some executives. They're in like a weird corporate restructure period right now. 
Well, because um, the former creative director of Gorilla, I think, is in charge of everything now. Herman. Yeah. Somebody. Yeah. I believe he's head of Sony Europe, I think. Um, so, yeah, I think we're going to see a console probably reveal. Maybe some first party games that haven't come out. That's because they haven't been revealed yet. Sorry, uh, I know they revealed the controller, but have we seen no. an actual no. console there's been, yet? There's been pictures of dev kits. Um, that weird that, one with that the for pizza some reason, holder. For some reason, people assume the final console is going to look like the dev kit, which it never, ever, ever does. Yeah. Um, Plus, those are old. So those I don't dev know, kits I, have been out for a year. It's yes. not like those are yes. dev kits that went out this year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I thought... I don't know. Like the, the the Xbox X the Xbox One X dev kit looked I thought like normal. I don't know why Sony went with such a crazy design just for the dev kit. It just looks so funky. It looks like well, a 90s version of what they thought future consoles would look yeah. like. And I do love the original original Xbox. Yes. This is just a huge yeah. X. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I did really stuck it stuck it with I the name. I did see something. I think it was Digital Foundry talking about one of the reasons why they may have designed the dev kit like that was because that design, that V-shape, actually gives you a whole bunch of vents for cooling. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit easier to cool it for, for that. Exhaust. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would assume that that's why they did it that way. I just, I, something about, like, that super chunky kind of design just doesn't yeah. fit within Sony's more, like, mm -hmm. sleek aesthetic. But it's it's just a dev kit, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I, I got to go with Will. I mean, I would assume first party, at least one or two big reveals, or, or at least, hey, here's a game that's going to show off, you know, what the new PS5 can do. Uh, do you and... think... Sorry. Go for it. No, no go, for it. go for it. Go for it. I was going to say, as far as first party games go, I'm trying to think of, like, the big Horizon ones. 2. I don't think they... Huh? Yes. Horizon 2. I think the timing yeah, is Yeah, Horizon right. Zero Dawn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... But, but do you think they'd lead with that since the first one's coming to Steam? Well, yeah, because I think the Steam the Maybe. Steam sell is I, I just don't... them getting money off something off a dormant property at this point. Well, I feel like that's gonna piss off all their fanboys. Well, it already pissed them off by by saying that it was coming to PC. Yeah. So what's one more? Yeah, that's is, true. is Sony Santa Monica? You think gonna release I, anything? Man, now I thought about that. Yeah. It's it's been a minute. A since... God of War sequel. Yeah. Well, that'd be great. They can probably announce. Pre prequel um and they that'll be interesting i did you guys watch that last of us 2 state of play no. i did at just the part where that girl depressed. was playing hotline miami on the vita yeah <laughs> so i this is a first for me but i couldn't finish it it was a little too much i so i had i this is this is a stream exclusive <laughs> i had it ex, i had it spoiled for me so I'm not going to do spoils, obviously, but um, oh, the game? I, had, I had the game spoiled for me. So I don't have a PlayStation, so I normally play games years after they come out and then catch up on all the cool exclusives that I missed. Uh, even pre-spoilers, I was thinking that what they had released as far as the gameplay trailers and some of the stuff that they'd done uh, at conferences it's and I don't know if this is tied at all to what you were saying, Will, just now, but like it kind of just makes me depressed. Like the first game made me depressed in like a good way. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, this is a really like dark story. It's like it's you know, it's 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 realistic in the way that like it, it has characters that act with humanity and you know they 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 do things for their own reasons and you find out those reasons and it, it's like all inspiring how the story was told, but then like it just seems like torture porn at this point yeah, to me. I'm like, all in on that. I don't know. Yeah. Some, something, something about like, <laughs> uh, like I can respect Neil Druckmann as like a storyteller, but he's got like a massive hard on for like yeah, pain and suffering. So, and it just annoys me now the more that I see it. And watching that state of play video really just sort of brought that forward. And I, I finished it, but I was like, I, I like okay, like I know what to expect. I, I, I wasn't. I was wowed by the systems that they had built, but not by the world that they were showcasing, mm -hmm. if that makes any yeah. sense. Like, it looks yeah. beautiful, but like, I don't, a friend of mine said, 
is there a version of The Last of Us 2 with no characters and no violence that I can just like walk around in this beautifully designed world because I don't want to play a game that's surrounded by so much like suffering. Like I, right. I, I don't want that right now. And, you know, t- t- every person is different. And, and I'm sure, you know, The Last of Us is going to tell, well, from some of the spoilers, like it's going to tell an interesting story at least. Yeah. Um, but it's it's just too much too much darkness for me, especially like now Mm -hmm. i don't know it just feels it feels had covid not happened i think maybe i would feel a little bit different but to me i just i can't get into it yeah yeah and i like and this is coming coming out at a weird time inadvertently and this is coming from someone who loved the first one yeah and i I really really like the first one um but yeah it's something about it i was just like i like i'll eventually i'm in that weird limbo where i don't think i'm gonna buy it when it comes out but it could be the day before and i'm like you know what i'm just gonna buy it and play it and get it over with but i'm not like any sort of huge fervor for it and exactly what you said it's like not like torture porn in the sense that like i get what they're going for they're trying to make it gritty and real and all this stuff but it just like watching some of that stuff um i was like yeah i don't know if i just really need to see or experience that right now yeah um but we'll see i Honestly, I'm just, I tweeted this the other day, but I, I'm just looking forward to more music. Yes. Uh, because that first, that first game's music is so good. Um, Santa, Santa Olala. Yeah, however you say that man's name. Um, so. I still won't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll see what happens. But as far as the, when's the reveal event supposed to be? The fifth? The third. Yeah. Next Wednesday. Third. Oh, so same day as the next season of Warzone. But yeah, I think at the least we'll get a view of the console finally. Yeah, I the thing yep. that I cannot decide if it's going to happen or not is the price. Because I want to say no, but at the same time, it's, gonna it's be- right around E3 time, which is typically when the price is revealed. So, Because Xbox revealed what their price was going to be, no, right? No, they have not. No. No, oh no! No, they're oh. people think Xbox is waiting to undercut them by a yeah, hundred. I, I would, I would say PS, PS4 was more expensive than Xbox One. Yeah, it was a hundred dollar difference. Yeah, I would say for PS5, five hundred. It fits with the marketing. Yeah, I too, think I think so it's I mean, going to be five hundred. Each of them is going to be five hundred. Yeah. The the one thing is if those rumors of a lower cost slightly gimped xbox series x version for like 400 or 350 Just r- like right out of the right gate. out of the gate two skews there's been rumors yeah. for years that they that they're trying to put out like a dual console like a one low spec a one high spec and That'd and the rumors are still there i i don't think they're gonna do it but there's enough rumors out there for for it to possibly happen so basically, like it would be, I think it would be a Series X and then a spec between the One X and the Series X. Yeah, because the, as they explained, it's just called the Xbox now. So this yeah. one that's coming out in the holiday is the Series X, Xbox. Man, they that naming is still just like I, I understand that, but if you're gonna start a whole new naming convention you don't start with series x like if they did series a yeah. then it's like okay it makes sense now b is going to be better but but what comes after this y series y it's like what's but going on i i think wait till I they think get to you the just pointed x. out why they didn't do that which i, I understand they should have or shouldn't have yeah. but they call the first one series a and Ooh. the series b is just a lesser model or something then yeah, it doesn't make sense. They could do like they could do um, a, what? Uh, what is it that um, iPhone does? Isn't like an AR or a 5R? They put a they put a letter at the yeah. end. Like, AR, oh, and like XR, M4. Like yeah. Yeah. Um, um, real, real quick, guys, mm-hmm. can anyone else build anything? Because I just got a thing that said cannot build any more rides or attractions because they're too many. Oh, I'm still building something. Let me, let me try. But to, you've already, let me you've try already to started, something. right? I've started it. Yeah, I, I, I have that, that too. Ooh. I mean, I could delete some of my 40 to 50 chicken restaurants. Actually, <laughs> no, we need those. <laughs> the, well, Will, if you want to Google real quick, if that applies to the stalls, because we could start to delete some stalls. Well, and I could also, we could also delete well, stuff let me, that's let me, not a coaster. Let yeah. me delete one chicken stall. Like I've got like a Ferris stuff. wheel and a golf course. Because and... the other thing I can do is I can just go down rides that people aren't but going see if on. You, can you see if you can build something, Ian? 
or Kyle? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we could see how which many, rides are how under. How many chicken stalls nope. you got? I can't. I, I cannot right now. So yeah, I took I took uh, the spot, but if you get rid of the chicken stalls, it does work. Okay, there are forty six of them. Why? That's a lot. It's a lot of chicken. Ooh, why? Because that's all I did. The <laughs> are last people, stream. Are people buying? <laughs> No, I just put them all over Jake's Island. Hi, Ninja. Place. Hi, Hexador. Thanks for joining, y'all. Hexador. Can't believe, I still Sorry. cannot believe we have the world famous Ninja. Uh, it's a little weird that he watches us on Twitch instead of Mixer, but I'm not complaining. You made that joke last time. It's, it's, he's the new stream mom. Still not funny. He's not the new stream mom. He's the old decrepit stream mom that we hate. Stream grandma? <laughs> stream grandma. <laughs> Oh, classic. Um, did you guys hear about that? Um, the uh, Skyrim grandma? Yeah, I'm not sure what to trust because all stuff. those articles came out and then she came back on the Twitter the next day and she was like, hey yeah, guys, I wasn't I, don't I wasn't being harassed. I just needed a break. She, That's all. And it was like, what? I thought it was so... But also she like contradicted herself too. She, she's getting up there. Because she said she was reading... Well, so she said she was reading comments and feeling down. Yeah which is hard to interpret because she could have meant like she was feeling down about the person's comment mm -hmm. or about the person who wrote the comment. I think, I think so, I don't want to play, you know, like fake news. I don't want to put my fake news hat on. I, that's in the other room. I'd have to get up to go get it. <laughs> but We've but seen it, it feels like it feels like <laughs> there were a lot of uh, journalists who saw the story they wanted to report on with this and hopped on it yep. without actually confirming anything or, or going to the source and getting the details. And but Ian, that's that's, cool. that's journalism. Yeah, that's true. That's what journalism means. Again, Kyle, my hat's in the other room. I can't go get it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, I just uh, ignored the whole thing. She, you know, I saw that tweet. Well, like I, I saw, I think it was IGN or something, and I like liked it on Twitter, and they were saying like, oh, you know, like people came out, and I was like, oh, like that sucks that you know people were harassing her. Like, what did she didn't even do anything. Mm -hmm as far as I could read in the article. And then I saw what you just, what you mentioned, she like retweet or she responded to a tweet from VG 24 seven. She was like, hi, VG 24 seven. I don't know what you are, but yeah. it, like she literally said, like, I don't know like why you exist, but you have the story wrong. And then like a bunch of people liked and retweeted that. And I was like, okay, so somebody, somewhere along the line, somebody got something wrong and everyone decided that they were going to go with that version of the story anyway. Exactly. So yeah. Classic. 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 Always fresh. Classic. <laughs> I don't like pickles. Um, well, you're really? dead to me. Like oh, at sorry. all or certain pickle types? No, I just, I, I used to like put them on cheeseburgers and stuff and, and have them when I was a kid, but I I guess my tastes change. They come in all shapes and sizes. I know. I, I like a, a nice sliced cucumber. Like those are nice, Ooh. but I don't like pickles that much. Same with baked beans. I used to eat baked beans all the time, and now I'm like, I don't know. I can't. I, I can't do it. Baked beans. Oh, Daddy, love me bacon. Beans on toast. Oh, beans oh, on toast. Beans on toast. I, love, I grew up with it, and I just thought it was a regular thing, till people made fun of me. But I do. It's still delicious. Eggs on toast, like scrambled eggs on toast with some cheese. Oh, so good. What's the objective here? Says Hexador. Um, uh, it's to, to not kill anybody. Yeah. <laughs> We're just kind of again. again. Okay, so Jeepers, my cards for gamers is stuck. We should we should talk about this real quick because we were gonna try and get the maximum number of guests, which is seventy two hundred. I don't think we're gonna get there. Um, we also hit the ride and attraction limit, so I feel like this may be our final episode. This is four episodes. How are you guys feeling? No, I deleted oh all the chicken restaurants. But oh, you deleted Wait, all we, of them. Can we add stuff now? I deleted all forty. Okay, well let's let's oh, yeah, I can let's stuff. reassess at the end of the stream because I think part of the problem is. Okay. This isn't as endless. So as, as we were led to. Yeah, I, I was planning to do two more episodes after this, but maybe it's less than that. But we'll reassess at the end. Jimmy agrees with me here. He says, yo, I made eggs uh, over easy eggs on a oh. bagel the other day and it was lit, which yeah. is so good. Those are good. What does lit mean again? That's good. Uh, right? You set it on you fire. Have a, like a light on it. The marijuana term. It's like a creme brulee. Mm. Jimmy's a big, uh, big weed guy. So, or, I'm sorry, Ninja. Ninja's a Ninja. big weed guy. Ninja smokes. I don't a lot know of how weed, we got so. past the sponsors with that, but somehow they're still with them. It's crazy. 
Well, yeah. Well, he has sloncers too, oh. doesn't he? Wait, wait, what's the weed version of a sponsor? Of a sloncer? Sponsor. Uh, I don't know. Um, what's a weed term that starts with S? Spliff? Spliffs or spliffers? <laughs> Spliffs or spliffers? Kyle Clement and Fletch with the drug Swiffer, terminology. Swiffer Man, doctors. you gotta get more spliffsers, bruh. Bruh. <sighs> spliffsers sounds like, it sounds like something you'd hear in like an 80s urban low budget action movie. Like a gang. Oh. It's the I just spliffers. Of, spliffers. If you spell it wrong, it's spilf. <laughs> like... Spliff, I'd like to friend. <laughs> Spliff, I'd like to. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this is unrelated, but I was actually this week I was pulling a bunch of gameplay footage off of one of my external drives onto a backup, and I was looking through some game gameplay from uh, Pod Racer Two: Racer Revenge, and there is a character named Dax Gasaway. Which sounds like something you would buy at the drugstore. <laughs> Gasaway sounds like such a non Star Wars That's name. So good. Yeah. Dax is definitely a name. Gasaway? Dax Gasaway. sounds like a, like a knockoff brand of Gas X. Unrelated to Gascano. Sebulba. <gasps> Sebulba! That's one of them. Hey, um, Jake, this is your fault. It just needs to be said again. Huh? Phantom Menace, highly underrated. Fantastic. It's my favorite of the prequels. Yes. I would agree I with think, that. I think th this may be too big of a topic for a stream, but it may be one of my top four Star Wars movies. Top four, top three. It's it's just real good. It's, I don't know about that. It is... I still enjoy watching it. I don't... It's no Rise of Skywalker. It, it's, it's no Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, God. Um, no, I, I, there's so much like cool stuff in that movie. Like oh, the yeah. fact that that movie out of all of the Star Wars movies has the most miniature work done mm -hmm. is like always blows my mind. Very cool. Um, and I think Adam Savage worked on it too, which is even cooler. Yeah. Well, I know, I know he worked on two. Attack of the Clones because there's yeah. pictures of him painting the Camino factories. Yeah. And the well, Genosha. And, and uh, Ninjaneer is saying, it's the only Star Wars movie with pod racing, and I it mean, it is that, the only Star Wars movie with pod racing. Yeah. There uh, needs to be more. There needs more pod and racing. Representation. Only Star Wars movie with trade negotiation. Mm. True. It's just everyone's it's just favorite. The what do you guys? How do you guys feel about? Uh... Okay, give me a second. This is so hard. Okay. Revenge really? of the Sith. <laughs> I, okay, here's what here's the problem. I always get Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi mixed up. Like I always want to say Return of the Sith or Revenge of the Jedi. Or Revenge of the well, especially it used it to be called, it used to be called Re yeah. Revenge of Revenge and of now, the Jedi. And now oh, it's thanks, Rise Star of Skywalker. Wars, so I'm like <laughs> actually, anyways, actually, there were posters and action figures printed. How do you guys feel well, about you read, uh, you read a fan fiction Star Wars script with us? You can't not call <laughs> you yourself. A nerd. How true. do you guys feel about uh, Revenge of the Sith. That is what it's called, right? Return of the Jedi? Oh, no. I, I definitely... Like yeah, I like it more than Attack of the Clones. Yes. But it yeah. still is pretty clunky. It's it's real cringe sometimes. It's pretty like, like clunky. Really, anything with Padme in that movie yeah. is like, I can't watch it. Yeah, I get um, to. But, like, the, the, I think it's just, like, you know the the outcome of it like you knew the outcome of of what would eventually happen at the end of the prequels and that's just catching up with what you knew so the other two movies are like what's gonna happen um and it like the the action is really cheesy and over the top in the third one yeah. whereas like in in the action in phantom menace is actually like pretty serious oh, yeah, it's, it's real good and too. it just has a complete it was before yeah, they were it, doing a million flips yeah um there's there some Starfall. flipping and Obi-Wan Kenobi. But not uh, a lot of flipping. Yeah. But like I don't know, some of the some of the stuff in Revenge of the Sith is just like uh um not Ian Malcolm, what's his name? Gibson. Ian Holm mm -hmm. is like but yeah. Uh balls to the wall, like yeah. just crazy with his Palpatine stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ian and McDermott. Ian, Ian McDermott. McDermott, yeah, not it's Ian. Like Ian, Ian Bilbo. Holm, Bilbo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get them mixed up. Um 
Yeah, and he, he's like so committed, but the writing is so bad. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. It's, it, it's, he's, it's uh, chewing the scenery in every scene. Oh, yeah. Um, I will say um, the production design in all the Star Wars films is always top notch. Yep. Like, regardless of the clunky writing and the clunky acting, yeah. it, they're always a joy to look at and yep. watch. I love the like I I hate the battle on Geonosis from a story standpoint because it's just two totally interchangeable uh, limitless armies fighting each other but I love watching that's them. there's um, oh, yeah. and oh, uh, that's uh, that's I think that's the main reason why I like Attack of the Clones so much is because of there's two things in Attack of the Clones number one when Django is tracking down Anakin, or maybe it's Obi Wan in the asteroid field, Obi-Wan? and they're dropping the sonic. Are you talking about the guitar bombs? Y- yep, the sonic so good, bombs. incredibly good, Those are awesome. incredibly good sequence. And then the entire sequence at the end, when begun the Clone Wars has just all of the sound, yeah. all of the visuals, every single vehicle design, all the fight scenes, all the clone troopers. That entire like ten to fifteen se- minute sequence is just so close to perfection. I that it's longer than that it probably it's is. like the whole third it's act of the movie it's so good yeah. it's so incredible and then and then you get just, to see Yoda fight like the rest of the movie is just i forget about it because i know what's coming and it's so good anyways uh, sorry Kyle you were you were going how does that movie how does attack of the clones start is that the one where where padme fake, gets fake padme, yeah, fake, dies. Padme. Okay. fake padme dies yeah. but then what happens between that they they and have Geonosis? padme it gets almost assassinated by the shapeshifter and then oh and the slugs yeah, yeah. And, then death room. Sticks. yeah. and then there's the whole like you want to buy some death sticks right right um and I'm gonna rethink my life. so anakin goes with padme to naboo to, because right, to be they, they like guard. they sneak up sneak on the the little oh. Yeah, Pleasure and then the thingy. dart the dart uh, leads him to the diner which leads him to the library which leads him to which leads him to Kameo? Uh, k- uh, k- k- what is Dexter it? Dexter Jetsters. Yes. Dexter That's also Jetsters. not a very Camino. Star Wars yeah. name. Yeah, Dexter Camino. Jetsters. Yeah. Um, yeah, Camino. Look at my 50s bar. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that leads him to Master Cypher Diaz. Right. He was killed almost 10 years ago. Yes. Um, uh, and which leads him to Django, Django. which leads yeah. him to Django. Genosis. Yeah. Django 2. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's why when, uh, when it comes yeah. to, like, the, there's some good battle scenes in Revenge of the Sith, but it's just not quite as good, and it doesn't... It's just, man, Clone Wars. We, I love Clone Wars so much. We have, opening, we have wish... another ninja here. Ninja Uh-oh. 2. Hi, Ninja. Oh, ninja 2. Oh, oh, uh-huh. He says, are all four of you playing? Yes, yeah, we well, are. Yeah, let me zoom out yes, real quick and are. show you what we got here. Insanity. Oh, yeah, it's pretty expansive now. We got a lot going on. There are... There's a lot of acreage uh, we have. What's the guest really count? Thirty-two, thirteen. Guess Thirty-two, fifty-six. Thirty, eighty-two. Uh, Thirty-three, twenty-three. Oh, so boy. I think as long as you guys are still building fine, it's okay. It just means that your guest count is not accurate. Okay. okay. I just want to pop back in and be accurate. Yeah. Let me let me hop out. Um, but anyways, I just bring it up because there's a lot of people who act like, who say that. Revenge of the Sith is either the best prequel or the best Star Wars movie, and I don't agree with either of those. Mm-hmm. And I don't agree. I definitely with don't agree either. with the second thing you said. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, but the I think that like the last 30 minutes of Attack of the Clones are super cool to watch and the first 20 minutes of Revenge of the Sith that battle over Geonosis is really See cool. I I like I like it up until the point w- when they get into the ship that Grievous is yes, on that's because when it's not cool anymore. That's when the the comedy starts and it's like this is so bad. Like yeah. the whole thing with the elevators like oh I can't real, real bad. Yeah. I wish like as far as casting, casting in the Star Wars films has always been kind of hit or miss. But I think Christopher Lee as Count Dooku was a inspired was a great choice. Yeah. 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 
Especially just, just getting such to a see commanding him. presence. Wait, yeah. Oh, his voice is like there's none, none better. Mm -hmm. um, but Are yeah, you? I, I'm, I'm totally with you on on the end of Attack of the Clones. Everything up to that is pretty rough, but mm -hmm. like there are moments that I still like will recall in that movie with it's like the sound design of some of the guns mm -hmm. that like like there's there's just a series of Rubio shots saying where he's quite beside himself yes that as his part head is getting dragged specifically the arena. should have been nominated for best picture um no where it's like you know there's shots of like the droid army going and shooting you know their ridiculous things and it's like it's like just so imaginative and it's like nice to live in that world where it's like every shot is something new and it's cool even if it doesn't make sense and it sounds cool and it's like real punchy uh but then like everything else around it just sort of falls apart mm. <laughs> like that's that sequence when because they they the the army or whatever is defending the this mini death star ball thingies that are rising up yeah yeah and like the clone the clone army has that line of like laser tank things yeah, like, where they, they like shoot for the, the fuel lasers, tanks and it's like going it's like going up and then they shoot it and shoot it and shoot it and shoot it and it comes down it creates that sandstorm yeah, like, that's, yeah so that's pretty cool. that's pretty great that, yeah that's, that's so that cool whole sequence is and it, isn't there one shot where you, it the camera follows some of the rockets from one of the gunships into yeah. like a similar yeah. sequence the the, yeah. the 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 rolling rocket shooter mm -hmm. thingy yeah i love shots where the camera is mounted to some object that is going at an incredibly stupid rate oh that's like my favorite shot of rogue one is the x-wing that's in like it's like mounted above the cameras mounted above the cockpit and there's that x-wing in hyperspace and then it just blasts out of light speed over um scarif so you're saying you liked man of steel i did not like oh, man, of man of steel, steel. <laughs> what a disappointment I, I always but, like in space movies when they have the camera attached to the to like the fuel pod that gets ejected from a yes. like a spaceship and it's like floating back down to Earth. It's always who's good. interested in the Snyder cut? Uh, I'm not gonna watch it better. at least. I don't, I, well, I think the color grading is no, gonna be better not. because I definitely remember the two trailers. Yeah. How, how the trailers bad were rough. way better yeah. than the final cut. I will never forgive. Uh, sorry, this is tangentially related. I will never forgive Man of Steel. Because it's initial, yes, the it's trailer initial that used the trailer that used the Gandalf music, and I will never forgive them for that. They used the Gandalf death music in the it's very so first good. trailer. It's Wait, so like good. Now, Howard Shore's actual score? Yeah, they used the 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 lady singing it. when Gandalf dies. Yeah, uh, I don't yeah. remember that. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's it real good angry. though. It I liked it. I yeah. I thought that was a good trailer. Um, also, you, oh, Man yeah. of Steel has good trailers. Yeah, like the yeah. third trailer for that movie is so. The good. trailer sold it really well, um, but then the movie didn't deliver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you guys watched? Because um, this just as we're talking about failed Warner Brothers films. Um, <laughs> did any of you, when Suicide Squad came out, did you ever go back and watch like the three main trailers back to back to see like oh, yeah. the, the shifting different. tone? No. Yeah. No, I've never even seen Suicide Squad. It's not good. Have you really? Yeah, I don't really plan on it. Oh, it's real bad. It's yeah. real bad. But um, yeah, it was like there was the first like the the trailer they showed at like Comic Con 2015. It was or one of those like it was one of those like dark cover versions of a song. Oh right? yeah, it was real dark and gritty. Yeah. And then it was, I think, maybe Guardians had just come out, and then a second theatrical trailer released that was slightly peppier but still kind of dark and then they did that bohemian rhapsody trailer where even like the title card at the end of the trailer gets more colorful yeah as they the like, trailers go on and as like added neon like, to it or whatever people don't want to see our sad depressing villain movie yeah so let's spice it up and that third Suicide Squad trailer was great. Made me excited to go see it, and then I yeah. saw it, and it was real bad. Yep. I, I had the exact same experience. It's one of those, like, I can't believe I paid to see that. Yeah. It was not good. We should, we should do a stream where we play a game, like... Uh, some game that's good for like podcasting or something mm -hmm. and listen to David Ayer's Suicide Squad in the background and try to try to follow what's going on <laughs> it's because uh, we did that we reviewed that on 
Terio Studios when it came out, and I remember that was a very... It's one of the longer episodes. It's like 45 or 50 minutes, and I edited it down from like three hours of us just angrily talking about the Bugs. movie. That's pretty funny. Because yeah. it had a real wild development saga. Did anyone see the Harle- the Emancipation of Proclamation One, Harley, Harley Quinn? 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 No, Quinn? God, no. I didn't. The Fantabulous did Emancipation of Harley Quinn? I liked it. Yeah. I I was interested in seeing it, and then I think it... Would, would that come out around November or December? I thought it was early spring. Like, it got, like, January, February. I could be wrong, though. Maybe I just remembered... I think it got pushed back and it okay. had a new date. But no, no, I thought it was fun. I never I never saw it. I like the trailers, especially the the last one where it's a cover. It's an English cover of a German song. I can't remember. I love that trailer. I thought it was really well done. I'm like a I have a folder on my computer just full of trailers that I really like and I'll watch them sometimes because uh, I'm not a nerd. And yeah, I wanted to see it, but I just never got around to it. Yeah, no, I thought it was good. It came out on February seventh. Okay. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was way it was way more coherent and well put together than any of the other DC films, which I know is a low bar. But this was like an actually thought out, well produced, fun movie. Well, that's good. Yeah, it just it just seemed like from the trailers, it seemed like it was sticking way too close to the Suicide Squad thing, and I was like, oh, it definitely, once, you know. It if was you, like, yeah, if you were not into Margot Robbie's character, yeah, and I it's the not, same yeah. character. <laughs> yeah, if you if you can get past the the quirkiness of that interpretation of Harley Quinn, then you'll have fun with that. It it's like but Suicide I can see Squad how it meets Deadpool, Deadpool, right? What? It's like Suicide Squad meets Deadpool, right? It. She like addresses the audience yeah like yeah, narrates she's right? she's the unreliable narrator of the whole story but she's not like it's not nearly as quippy or fourth wall breaky as okay. deadpool it's got some of that but not not to the extent not to the like annoy almost annoyingly involved extent of ryan reynolds fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break 16 walls. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't. I don't like any of the, the Deadpool movies. I like Ryan Reynolds more than I like Deadpool. Yeah. <laughs> A yeah. friend and I were. The trailers for. Did Free Guy get pushed back? Because I think that was supposed to come out sometime soonish. I think so. I saw the trailer for Free Guy, and it's weird to think that, like, Ryan Reynolds' movie is now kind of its own genre yeah. of movie. <laughs> I saw that trailer for Free Guy, and I thought, man, this is what Ready Player One should have been. Now, that's actual people and not a terrible movie. (laughs) The funny thing about Ready Player One was that it has that scene where the bad guy is talking to the protagonist, and he's like, has him captured, but he's trying to be like, look, I'm cool just like you. I, I, um, (laughs) what is this thing? They're feeding him information. They're feeding him information, and he's dropping all these like cultural hints where he's like, "I listened to Rush, I watched Mega Man, I played all these games too, I love it." And then he's just like, "No, you're just a soulless corporation who's cashing in on these themes and nostalgia for money's sake." And it's like, "What do you think this movie is? What do you think this entire series <laughs> is? How could you have this scene in the movie and not leave and go cry why yourself to sleep? Even make why this? would you allow your? Why would?" you ever state like your evil attentions in your own piece of art it was like what are you doing uh, well that's okay. what like that's the exact same thing happened in wally where it's like oh, yeah. oh hey we've got really big there's like one big company that owns everything oh, yeah. and it's like disney yeah. produced this that's guys a good like, point. Yeah, but wally was good <laughs> yeah granted it was before <laughs> disney had made about half the acquisitions they have now but yeah yeah. I um that so I read that book when I was in college and I Ian, I know your opinions on the book. I it's, like it's the garbage. Book. But as someone Will, you who... have bad taste cuz okay, just if you haven't read the book, all the book is the uh, book is just like 
that rant that the bad guy has in the movie where he just says like, I listened to the Rush album seven times. I watched all the Ultraman series, including series X, X, Y, and Z. My favorite is this, this, and this. That's the entire book. It's just somebody spouting off right. as much cultural stuff as they Ooh, could. Oh, oh my just gosh. Blew up. Oh. Whoa. A limb rain roller coaster Yeah, one. that was mine. Oh Anyways. Oh no! So gonna, I, I, the look only at thing, the park rating is falling in real time. Oh no. my god! Yes. Okay, let's see if it crashes. So again. the only thing I'll say about that book. This was it, supposed to be our apology stream. No, no. But we just killed not allowed. Oh. Is the train still going? Uh, I I redid it. Let's see if it actually stops. Okay. Where was oh, it? Oh, it did. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you've got to stop it, or more things will crash. <sighs> He's tempted to crash it again. Um, um, yeah. I would be interested to see a manuscript of Ready Player One if you only include like the necessary story elements. Yeah, I th I think yeah. the story structure I do agree, is great. Like I I yeah. agree with Kyle. I enjoyed I enjoyed reading it like when I read it, but I yeah. understand people's criticisms of I, it that it is just like the thing a I was real say of pop about culture it references. Is if you didn't if you enjoyed that book or didn't like that book. Never, ever, 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 ever read his second book. It's because, so bad. Because oh, it's, yeah. Terrible. Terrible. it's not so great. bad. Because I will say, the first book had the the structure of mm -hmm. everything was 80s -ified and everyone knew everything about everything because it was part of a game that everyone was trying to figure out in this virtual reality. It was all connected. Like, you had to know about stupid 80s Ultraman and all this stuff because it had something to do vaguely with the plot. But, and it, so when characters did that, they seemed like, they seemed less like jerks because it made sense that they knew those things in that yeah. book. But the second book, the main character still knows all those things, but it is in the modern world mm -hmm. so he just comes across as this uh part of my french ass hat who yeah. just knows everything who just tries to act cool and be like you didn't know that back to the future had a dinosaur in my butt and so it's like <laughs> it, it just i remember becomes, that like, chapter i did the, not like, know that the first the, the ready play at one book made sense that people knew this and were being jerks about it because it was like they were being jerks about history class like yeah. oh you didn't know the andalt crossed the andes in the 20th century mm -hmm. so like that stuff made sense but then when you apply it to modern day <laughs> yeah. the kid was just a jerk yeah. and i hated him and i'm glad his father was missing i didn't finish it i got up to the point where he oh, goes to the moon base and meets his father and i was like this is so this is like fan fiction of a book that was never actually written like mm -hmm. it just is bad yeah um and I mean, I've I've actually met Ernest Klein, and he was very nice. And it, he, you know, he, he was. He, I took a picture with him. He's a nice did you meet guy. Him at an airport? I did. I stalked him. He <laughs> was on my flight from Philadelphia to Dallas, and I, I in the bathroom. <laughs> I thought he was on the like. I I like walked into the the waiting area, or the, at the terminal, and I saw him. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's Ernie Klein. I'm not going to say anything because it's five in the morning and I really want to go to sleep on this airplane. We flew our two hours or whatever to and we got off and I like looked around and I happened to see him and I was like, I'm gonna follow him. And he, <laughs> he went to McDonald's and whatever. Didn't have an urgent connection. <laughs> no, yeah, you know, he went to McDonald's and I was like, man, after my own heart. And uh, I, you know, he was eating and I like, like looked around. I was like, okay, I guess I'll do this. And I just walked up, I said, hi, you Ernest Klein. I, you know, really enjoyed Ready Player One. He was very nice. We talked a little bit about the movie, which was then in very, very pre-production. Um, I think Spielberg was attached, but they didn't have any set date for principal photography. And mm -hmm. he was nice. You know, I shook his hand and I was like, thanks. Great. So I was like, nice guy. Terrible, like, writer. Like, yeah, <laughs> really bad. Awful. Um, he's OK. He's Fifty Shades of Grey for nerds. That's what yes. it is. Yeah, I would 100%. agree with that. At the same time, I also enjoyed reading Ready Player One, and there are sequences of the movie that I really liked. Chase sequence, awesome. The yeah. the puzzle solving with the chase sequence, dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. You're telling within, me no one ever within went Within 30 reverse. seconds of playing that race, somebody would have gone backwards and figured it out. Um, yeah. the, the oh, way crash. the way the book the way the book does that first puzzle is so much better. It's joust, yeah. right? 
Well, no, it, the the way you the it's, way it's you on your find, yeah, it's on the education planet which everyone has access to. Oh, so it's, right. It yeah. needed to be it needed to be something that everyone could go to, and I was like, that's an interesting way of doing it, especially if all like public schooling on the Oasis is free, and then you know all you had to do was walk into this thing and you you know beat the the evil lich playing joust or whatever. I was like, okay, this is interesting. I hated what they did with the movie, but the race looked cool. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I, it was like the movie was definitely dumbed down, but like the stuff with the shining was really cool. Like the way they recreated that I was super into just because mm -hmm. I'm a big Kubrick fan, but like, I don't know. It was dumb. You can enjoy dumb stuff. The, uh, the giant Gundam at the end was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good, that was a good moment. That was before, I think that was before I started Gunpla, and I was like, oh, look, an Ian thing. <laughs> okay, uh, real quick, you messaged me immediately. Just just to get it out there, they are making a U.S. Gundam movie. I think it's in, it, I don't oh, even think no. the screenplay is done. Um, but is watching w. Gundam. Is W.S. Anderson directing it? Who's the guy who did all no. the Resident Evil movies? Oh, Paul Thomas Anderson? Paul, oh, Paul Thomas Anderson. Anderson. I, thought you said, I thought you said Wes Anderson, yeah. No, 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 no. not Wes Anderson. No, it's not... somebody else. It's somebody else. I can't remember who. Um, I can't keep the Brandon Anderson Brandon Sanderson. Straight. Paul Actually, Thomas you know. Anderson did There Will Be Blood? Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's it. That's and they, then... have the same, they have the same name, so. Right, and then who did Resident Evil? Paul Thomas. Isn't that Paul Thomas Paul Anderson? Thomas. Paul, no, no. Yeah, Paul, Paul Thomas Anderson is Mila Jokovic's husband, right? Yeah. Yes. He well, did then, Resident Evil. And then P. T. Anderson. P. T. Right? Anderson. Yeah, but did. but his but I think his name is Paul Thomas Anderson. No, we we're, get out we're very wrong here. Hold Paul on. Thomas Anderson is the you look that there up. will be blood guy. That's what I no, thought. And Hold I'm pretty on. sure there I'm pretty sure there's also a Paul Thomas Anderson who does all of the Resident Evil movies. They have the same name. Paul I'm sure it's not just like Thomas not Anderson. It's, it's Paul W. S. Anderson. There oh, yes, there that's it is. It. Okay, there so it Paul is. W. S. Anderson did Resident Evil. Paul yeah. Thomas say, Anderson did There Will Be Blood. And if there's Anderson's any totally industry different. that doesn't allow people to have the same names, it is Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> you are not allowed. That's why we have Michael B. Jordan. That's why we have Michael Caine. And Michael Caine. Michael, Michael Caine. Caine. Okay, here we go. You ready? Um, Legendary Pictures and Sunrise are teaming up to do a live-action yes. Gundam movie announced uh, at Anime Expo 2018. And 2019 deadline reports that Brian K. Vaughn will write and also serve as executive producer. I believe that's, that's as far as it is right not, now. I need, I need more what's the pedigree of what's brian t vaughn he, he i believe michael he wrote vaughn? machina he did let me look it up no. oh really michael no i vaughn, thought alex garland wrote x machina alex garland wrote okay wrote and hold directed. on give me a second I'm michael it vaughn or whatever did the the kingsman movies and he did x-men first class oh oh that's how i know that name yes okay uh yeah legendary oh, is also doing is alex music? garland did annihilation and x machina. yeah and x machina uh, okay, here we go. Um, he is a writer on Why the Last Man, which has not come out yet. He was also a mm. writer, two episodes of Lost, actually several, nine episodes of Lost, a bunch of episodes of Under the Dome, and that's, I think he was a, sorry, I'm just trying to find because Wikipedia says he's with, um, Wikipedia said he was with Ex Machina, but that is not. It's definitely Alex Garland did Ex Machina. Uh, I know, but I'm just trying, I'm trying to figure out what he was on Ex Machina. In relation to what we were talking about, Paul W.S. Anderson is doing the Monster Hunter movie, which yes. is gonna be a dumpster oh. fire. <laughs> oh. I can't wait. He wrote Ex Machina, which is I believe it's a comic that the movie's based on. Either that or it's named identically. Oh, wait, yes. So that was confusing because there, yes. So it was announced several months ago. I remember reading this and I remember commenting something about yeah. it on Twitter that Oscar Isaac is going to be in an adaptation of a comic called Ex Machina. And yeah, I think the movie's getting called something else. That's what it is. And um, that's why everybody was confused when it when the, the like variety was 
posting like Oscar Isaac in in c- confirmed for lead role in Ex Machina. It's going to be called like, it's hey. going to be called Ex Machina with no Ex piece. Machina. Ex Machina. <laughs> Like, it's like this happened. um this, My ex is machina. this clickbait ex. article i saw the other day and it, the title was why the last man changes its title to something better was like the clickbait title and you go into it and the entire clickbait article was just saying hey the project so far has just been called why but they finally settled on the name why the last man which is the title mm. of the comic book series and it was like you wrote an entire crappy clickbait article just to say <laughs> they're using the name that they're moving away from their secret name to their real name now Gotta get um, them but anyways i bring up gundam just because um talking about gundam yeah. in ready player one watching gundam the anime series Gundam, if you if it's done in the right hands, namely these two hands right here, that's that's the next Marvel franchise. There are there's so much history and so many good stories already in that anime that you could easily make a dozen films out of it. Like there was one anime I was watching, there was just the first episode of the of the 13 episode series. You could turn into an entire movie on its own. Like there's just so much ready to be adapted right there and nobody's done it yet. It's crazy. Like, all these, like, perfect stories, all within the context of this war. Just really good stuff you could do. It's, it's insane that it hasn't been done yet. Here's a film question for you. Will Tenet come out in July? No. It, they, there has to be an no. 80% or more theater open rate for... No, you, I know what, their, what the qualifications are. Do you oh, think no. it will happen? I don't think so. I think I they're going to so push either. it, and I think it's going to take Wonder Woman's spot. Uh-huh. Because Nolan's not gonna let it get a digital release. There's like no Trolls way in World hell. Tour. There's there's no way, um, and it'll it'll lose money. I mean, the only reason, I think it was Scoob. WB hadn't yet released the numbers for Scoob, mm-hmm. which got released digitally over the weekend mm-hmm. or last weekend or whatever. And I think it's because it didn't do well. Like yeah, oh. like it just did not do well but at that's, all. That's and crazy because basically tr- trolls trolls did really really well digital only. It made like it made like thirty million dollars over the weekend, which is crazy for yeah. a digital release. Yeah. Um, but people were basically saying that there's a, a woman on YouTube that I follow, uh, Grace Randolph, and she's very much on the business side of film and how it works, and she's saying that all the major studios were looking at the latest releases like Trolls, like Scoob, and basically depending on how they do financially, that will determine whether or not they wait, they push them back, or they just go for digital releases. And it's like, are people more likely to buy, you know, a a movie, you know, for like 48 hours or rent it? What's the price point going to be for that? Uh, And apparently Trolls did well, but it was like a fluke. Like it shouldn't have done that well. And it's a kid's movie, you know. Yeah. And Scoob did real bad. Yeah. Um, which also Trolls has like an eighty percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and Scoob has like forty. That's like mm. insane to me. Um. Oh, so, sorry. It has fifty. I'm just. 50%. I'm just gonna drop this right here. I'm just gonna. Just give me a second. I'm just gonna drop this. Christopher Nolan is way overrated. Between Interstellar oh, and Inception, we know. you've been over this so many nope. times. Those are two bad movies. <laughs> Which movies? Uh, Inception and Interstellar. Ian, can you leave? <laughs> really? Mm. I think Dunkirk's a good movie. <laughs> Dunkirk was okay. Dunkirk was good. I was okay with that. Okay, one. good. I. Kyle, I really did you? Dunkirk. I forget who was part of the group that drove to Nashville to go see Interstellar. Were you? I I saw it in New York. I went okay. to Lincoln Square and to see it on I, actual. I know I went with Coop, and it must have been like Taylor and Eric. And I can't remember who else, but yeah, we drove like the whatever it was, the three hours to Nashville to see it in 70 millimeter uh, at the Grand Ole Opry oh, oh, IMAX. Okay. I didn't hear what you said, but I'm assuming at, at, at the the Grand Ole Opry IMAX. I think we did. Yeah, yeah. and it was I've, like I've been from an actual theater. an actual film projector in 70 millimeter. I saw was... I saw Pacific Rim in that IMAX theater. It was amazing. Oh boy. <laughs> who did he rim? <laughs> <Her>. <laughs> Oh, uh, Jake's trying to hold it back. Uh. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> that was a good. <laughs> oh, boy. Did I talk about the free screening I went to of Pacific Room 2? Oh, no. I think I talked about that on stream. I don't think you have. 
I oh you know you oh. did yeah you just came out and you said this is real bad. No, I couldn't face the uh -huh. the whoever representative from Legendary. Because I saw that. <laughs> you just screamed at them. <laughs> I paid money for it. Just yelled. I knew it was gonna be God, bad. No. I didn't think it would be that bad. That was like yeah, sci-fi B yeah. movie bad, like sci-fi channel movie bad. Yeah, it was. Oh, man. It was not good. I like love Sharknado my boy John Boyega, but it was not good. He's um. He's not like too hot out of uh, Star Wars. Now he, uh, like, he well, hasn't he been. Be. He hasn't done too many good projects. But he's yeah, not. He, he's a leading man. Well, neither is Daisy Ridley, which is kind of like Adam Driver's been the only she's, one who's gotten any. She's got that Chaos Walking movie with Tom Holland, I think. Right. Oh yeah, that was supposed to come out like two years ago. It's a Doug Doug uh, Lehman movie or whatever. Yeah. Doug. But I remember seeing production stills from that a long time ago. Um, okay, um, real quick, can you guys can you guys leave the game and come back? I'm seeing like artifacts, and I just want to make sure. It's also stuttering for me. Um, I'm out. Yeah, I was getting. Let me know when I can stuttering. come back. Yeah, I'll, I'm out as well. Uh, just here listening. Let me see to if I can. Alistair Brimble's. The main problem is score I'm, main menu. I'm getting these like uh, the paths are getting chunks taken out of them and I replace it and then they disappear again but I think nice. it's fixed now okay you guys can come back okay I'm coming um, back sorry I just those pathways I had to fix because otherwise people were not connecting to the islands we are pushing the engine to its limit um I saw the only time I've seen uh 70 millimeter like not not IMAX but 70 millimeter film was the master and uh, mm. oh, yeah, yeah. the theater wasn't great. The theater was one of those old style where it's like mostly flat seating and the screen's a bit too far away, like on a stage. But the master. That's funny because that's a great 70 millimeter I film. I saw I that movie that. in probably the exact same way you did, Ian. I went to the Kentucky Theater in Lexington, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, it was, I don't, it might have been 65 projection. Anyway, it was real beautiful. And I didn't like the ending, but I enjoyed that movie at the time. And now I don't really care for it that much other than the performances. I just I, I thought it was going to end with Joaquin Phoenix driving the motorcycle out into the desert. And uh, what's his name is just yelling like, Freddy, Freddy. Yeah. I thought it was going to like smash the credits. I was like, that would have been satisfying. But then it went on for 30 more minutes. And I was like, yeah, you lost me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't I don't know that I'll watch it again, but it was just a great use of 70 millimeter to basically just do long shots of a character's face. Mm. Oh, it's good stuff. Great. I There's... saw Hateful Eight in 70. The one yes. that did the road I show. I saw the road show. Yeah, yeah. I have a yes. bunch of those. I just, last time I went to my parents, I have a bunch of the, because people, the they programs. gave out like the programs mm -hmm. and then people just left them there. So I have a stack of like eight programs that I just took. We didn't get them at the screening that I went to, so I Facebook messaged AMC and they mailed them to me. Oh, I was nice. like, thank you. That's awesome. Oh, that's and nice. then I worked for AMC for 10 months and it was terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> they said, we have to take those back now. <laughs> is, is, yeah, can we have those back? Is Hateful Eight good? Is that worth watching? I liked it a lot. It's, it's like my a favorite play. Tarantino. Yeah. It's like a like a stage play. Oh, that's good. That's good. Because I, I, I saw Django twice in theaters and I... I that was, I think, that was the movie that broke my fascination with Tarantino because Django had some issues, and then I watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and that was just like, okay, now you're just, now you're just masturbating. Aww. It was like, I love Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, I, really liked it. I just got the soundtrack for it on vinyl today from a guy in Italy. So I just think I'm like, um, yeah, I'm he, like, I've been broken. My favorite. I've been broken on my. I used to love Tarantino. I mean, I still really like his other movies but between those two and those being the, the two latest that i've seen i was kind of just like backed off on him a bit uh um, isn't he gonna do a star trek at some point yeah, yeah that's yeah. right is on for the original. featuring feet okay if, if somebody could go to the main entrance and fix these paths <laughs> um yeah hateful eight I it's it. for some reason it's i like i just like to sit down and watch that movie like have it on um forget where i was on a dock shoot for the place we previously worked for but um i was stuck in a hotel room actually it might have been in la when we were supposed to do some interview thing he brought me on but uh 
I, I just sat in the hotel room and watched Hateful Eight twice because it just kept replaying on the stupid like hotel TV. Mm -hmm. But uh, they actually released a mini series version. Uh, it's like Netflix four episodes, right? That I've I've wanted to watch. Apparently, there's like a minute of new footage, but I wanted to see how it. Just sixty seconds of new footage. <laughs> yeah. I had completely forgotten about that unspecified LA project until you mentioned it just now. Because we were going to interview Mark Hamill. Yeah. Yes. And so and audience, you can Robert. wonder about that fascinating project that has yet to manifest. And I was, well, I got in touch with Mark Hamill's people for Darksiders, but he wasn't available because he was like doing press for one of the Star Wars movies at the time. Lame. Who no. likes Star Wars? <laughs> uh, I have his PR person's email address. Yeah, so I'll have to watch Hateful Eight because it's, it's been on Netflix. So I just I wasn't sure if it was worth watching or not, but I'll definitely my, watch it now. My dad is not a Tarantino fan at all, and I think he watched it by accident, and I think <laughs> he said he liked it. So I don't know what it uh, it's. Um, so after I had watched it. Apparently, the movie is how Tarantino felt when he watched The Thing. Uh -huh. So I'm a big fan of The Thing. And I, I realize a lot of, like, similarities between them. And there's a really good, like, oh, the soundtrack is so good to Hateful Eight. Because uh, John really Carpenter is. did it. Marconi. Oh, did Carpenter do it? No. Not the oh, soundtrack. No. no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you just, <laughs> uh, my brain just broke for half a second. I was like, what? No, that was because uh, Enrico yeah, Morricone won his back. first Oscar for that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah and yep. he After didn't getting want to nominated do it. a bajillion times. Yeah, he's oh, actually somebody. I because I heard that he said he didn't want to do it, and then like a year ago, some trade website came out with supposedly Ennio Morricone said he hated working on the Hateful Eight and hated Tarantino. Yeah, I remember seeing that. And, and, and then Ennio Morricone came out and was saying, like, this is a complete lie. He was like, I never <laughs> I said that. that at all. And I was like, why would, like, why would you drum up controversy like that, like, four years after a movie came out? People would yeah. just lie on the internet? <laughs> also, the, 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 the dialogue, like, Quentin Tarantino had a field day with the dialogue, because it was all, like... Um, no contractions and all that sort of stuff because it's old west mm -hmm. so oh, actually uh that reminds me of true grit is another mm, fantastic the coens they, or the originals yeah, they, what's they had a, a separate Jones script Jones. they had a separate script supervisor or not script supervisor but they had a separate person on set who would stop the takes if anyone said a contraction because they weren't wait a minute people didn't i'm sorry what wait, wait a minute. are you saying contractions are a modern invention yeah, they didn't like. There was something about how they didn't say specific contractions, which is in funny. The Old West, because Jeff Bridges' character slurs the entire time. Yeah, it's it's like, how can you be sure? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's so good in that Bruce movie. Cog, so is Haley Steinfeld. She's fantastic. Yeah, in that she's movie. good. And she was like, she was like fourteen or whatever. And Jerry Seinfeld's great too. Dude, <laughs> not as good as. Uh, Haley Joel Osment. Yeah, I was trying to think of someone. You know what movie? Drake, I drink a mouthful. Uh, barely related. I was just thinking of movies that I've seen multiple times in the theater. I need to look this up. Uh, I saw American Gangster two or three times in the movie in the theaters. Never I don't think seen I've ever seen that. That's the that uh, Denzel. That's the Denzel Washington one. That one's that one's good. That one's good. Danny Z. Um, public. I've been told by several movies. actors that my scripts are too wordy. Public enemies. <laughs> It's because you, you're not just writing them a check, Jake. You're sending them a... <laughs> just write them a check. They won't say anything. Um, I saw Public... Public Enemies? That's the one I was thinking I of. I like oh, that. That's not the Shia LaBeouf movie. No, it's no, uh, well, Johnny, it's Mike, Johnny... It's the Michael Depp. Mann Dillinger one. Yeah. I really oh, like that movie. Michael I, Mann is so I good. I forget so. about Public Enemies because because I get it confused I'm with Black seen, Mass. That's Marion Cotillard's in that too, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I believe she plays his lover. Mass. She's dude, that movie I watched that in college and like I think I watched that like four times. That was not in um, theaters, but I that that movie was right on the cusp of like the digital versus film debate because it was digital yeah. and they're like, Why are you shoot it's so weird that it's an old timey movie, but you're shooting it like it's digital and he's like, Yeah, but look at all the lighting effects I'm getting with this firefight in the forest in the middle of the night. 
And people were like, well, but it's not film. And it's like, who cares? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks great. Uh, it's your 28 days later. Man. Stuck at 480. I love, I love Michael Mann. Michael Mann's great. Heat. Michael Mann's. I don't think I've ever seen he, that. Um, this is, Go watch Black Hat. This is like particular to me, but all of his gunplay in his movies is so accurate, and it's because he like took some gun course in like the 70s. So like even in one of his first movies in um, Thief, there's like this scene where he does like a press check and he clears the house and he does the same thing in Heat, and it's so good because it's so realistic. And it's like this, it's like the smallest little detail that that most people wouldn't even know about, let alone put in a movie. But he puts it in there because he wants it to be realistic, and it just adds so much to the movie when when the, when the character like does the most realistic, minute thing possible, like in um, like in, in Chef, like that shootout in the Naked Gun, yeah, <laughs> or like in Chef when when Favreau's like making the the grilled cheese and it's just over the top, but it's like showcasing all this like kitchen skills, and you're like, that's what this movie's about, and you're nailing the little details of it. It's great. Or when he's making pasta for Scarlett Johansson before he bangs her. Before he, that was before awesome. he tries to bang her. <laughs> yeah. I would try to bang he's her. Like, he's like, so should we? And she goes, no. And he goes, all right, I'll just make <laughs> you pasta then. <laughs> <laughs> she basically, like, has, 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 has yeah, yeah. yeah. She has Have you seen, sex with him. did you guys watch a, a chef show? I think it was on Netflix, no. but it was Favreau going around. Is it good? I watched, Is it good? I watched the again. episode, I watched the episode with Gwyneth Paltrow and couldn't do it because I don't like Gwyneth Paltrow Dude. anymore. It gets, it gets better. The best part, though, of the Gwyneth Paltrow episode is when she forgets she one yeah, of the Spider-Man like, movies. She, oh. <laughs> remember. she was like, oh, that's what that was for? She was like, I don't remember filming I mean, yeah, to be fair, they're probably she, shooting a ton of stuff she's back been to eaten. back. Eating too much goop. She's probably on um, lots of drugs. But yeah, she, like, Favreau had to remind her. He's like, yeah, and we we had this one of the days when we were on the Spider-Man set. And she's like, what? When we we, <laughs> that, we did what together? That's how I imagine Harrison. When we made love, love, Gwyneth. Oh. It's just like, oh. Now that I remember. Um, <laughs> Favvy. Favvy. Johnny Favs. Johnny Favs. But there's oh, an episode boy. with uh, the Russos and... Uh, and Tom Holland and and Robert Downey Jr. where oh, they have like seafood good. or something. That's no. cool. Oh, the we stop, know, did I'm, we ever I talk like about the stop motion animation? Can we numbers. talk about Endgame spoiler free? It's been a year. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah. I I liked Endgame so much, and it was pretty much only the first half of the movie because it felt like there were actually consequences in the Marvel world. Mm -hmm. And it felt like such a weird little indie movie, like all these broken characters just trying to get through the world together. And I loved that so much. And it felt so different from all these other Marvel movies. And then the fighting started and it kind of went back to boring normal. But I appreciated that so much of Endgame that it felt like not like a reset button, but it felt like they were starting from scratch almost with that movie. And I loved that. That uh, five years they, later thing, yeah, was so good. Yeah, and I yeah. knew there. Obviously, it's been you know ten plus years, and the Russos are like, yeah, we can take our time with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we it don't have to it rush didn't through. Feel it. Rush at all? Yeah, mm -mm. yeah. It, it felt picked. Great. A, it clipped along at a good pace. Even that first like hour and a half that is the depressing melancholy stuff. Uh -oh. Yeah, mom doesn't want end game spoilers. Oh, okay. But, yeah, well, hold off. We haven't, we haven't spoiled anything like, yet. But it's, it's, did like no, we really haven't spoiled anything. It's worth watching. We, no, we like, oh, we're done, stream mom. We're done. We won't it's, talk about it. It's Come literally back. the first like five minutes. Uh, Everyone's sad. We only talked about the first five minutes. I think I'm done with Marvel movies, though. I've said that for several years now, but I really do think I'm, I'm just tired of them. I after um, Far From Home, yeah, I was kind of like, yeah, I can take a break from this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you I, got I, not like Far From Home, which is you why we're gonna have mm -hmm. Black Widow. Yeah, and um, I wasn't. I probably was not gonna go it's, see that anyway. It's the perfect time for the Gundam franchise. That's all I'm saying, guys. Oh god, you got. I'm not. I don't want any more. I don't, I don't want any more prequels. Like I wasn't gonna go see, even if Black Widow wasn't releasing oh, in the okay. window that it was. I would just. I don't need that. But it's it's not a prequel. It's like a mequel. It's like in the middle of. Yeah, but it's not. It's pre. Yeah, I, I'm is it pre or post her I arrival well, in Iron Man two? It's it's after Iron Man three. It's it's oh. before it's before Infinity War, but after 
uh, Avengers two, oh. I think. I, so I'm weird. pretty sure. I just like you know what if you're gonna if you're gonna kill off a character, then kill her off. Don't try to squeeze in a previous movie. You know what I mean? Don't give me that Quicksilver movie no one's asking for. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm interested. I I I would have preferred a Hawkeye movie, but Jeremy Renner's being Jeremy Renner, so he is being Jeremy. Who, who knows? I will say, of the stuff that's been announced, I it's want hot. my Mahershala Ali Blade movie yes. as soon as possible. Yeah, oh my he's gosh! Good. Yes, he's good. and that and and don't forget. Doctor Strange 2, directed by Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi's Doctor Strange 2, mm -hmm. I have a passing fascination in. Oh, Doctor Strange, um, though. I, I, I think Sam Raimi's going to do it. I just remember that Doctor Strange was just like, asshole doctor, we think you're going to like him in the movie. <laughs> and it was just yeah. so annoying. I want them to bring back S. Mickelson, because <gasps> I just love oh, yeah. S. Mickelson. Oh, Prince Corvax said Punisher movie question mark I would love a Punisher oh, movie I I'd, want, I'd rather just do uh, this there already was a great side. Punisher movie yeah that Tom I, J movie is amazing I love the TV stuff <laughs> I want them to cut, I want them to roll John Bernthal's character into the Winter Soldier Falcon TV show I uh, you know I think Punisher would be a really good dynamic I, I'm trying to think it it feels like Marvel is always just a bit too feel good, even when things are bad. Except for the very beginning of Endgame, when things are bad, they're still a bit too feel good. And I feel like Punisher mm -hmm. would be a good way to come in and just be like, "The world's not nice," that you know, yeah. and just kind of do like a Batman type thing where it's just like, "No, this world sucks, and you got to get violent sometimes." <laughs> it's weird that there was like a, that nebulous period, the first season of Jessica Jones and the first season of Luke Cage, mm -hmm. where. Marvel and Netflix were being all coy and like, hated oh yeah, things. it's definitely in the same continuity. And they're like referencing the attack on New York and they're mm -hmm. referencing characters from the movies. And then at some point they were like, yeah, it's not the same continuity. Don't yeah. worry about it. And they were like, because I also would love to see Luke Cage because yeah. I love Mike Coulter as Luke Cage. Yeah, I he's not really good. like Mike Coulter. I did not like Luke Cage as uh, a series. Like, I I didn't like it at all. I liked the first season more than the second season. And there wasn't I, the third season. The, the weird thing is, I loved the first season of Jessica Jones and never watched the second season. The second like, season's pretty mm -hmm. good. The third season's okay. Yeah. I And I didn't touch... Uh, whatever the team up iron fist one or was. defenders the defenders. defenders yeah yeah defenders was real clunky sigourney weaver was in it and she was good did anyone watch um oh man what was the the guy who plays he's in game of thrones oh man it was like they they released this marvel movie it was like a it was like a tv movie but it was in imax i think they premiered it in imax the in him um, yeah the inhumans Whatever his name is from bad. Game of Thrones, was, yeah, I, I heard it was. I heard rough. it was terrible. Yeah. I did not watch it. No, me neither. I saw images of that giant CGI bulldog, and I went, "No, thank you." <laughs> <laughs> I've spent the last hour of the stream uh, with a handyman tab open and just flying around the park, having him clean up all the vomit. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't been doing much of anything. <laughs> I haven't been doing anything except deleting the uh, pathways and really bothering Ian. <laughs> wow. You realize that's kind of been screwing the park over, right? Oh, they're all going to my island. Wow. Um, Our park rating's back up from when those people died. It's not back up to where it was. But... I'll take credit for that. That's what, for I, that's what I imagine Disney executives sound like, Jake. Oh, uh, thanks for the <laughs> sub, <laughs> Prince. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Prince. You have the, good music, I think. The funny thing is, like, our rating dropped, but but nobody died. You know what they I mean? They didn't leave, and they didn't start leaving en masse yeah. like last yeah. time. Uh, Prince, Prince Korvac commented, he said, this when we were talking about Punisher being in Winter Soldier uh, TV show, he said, that would be awesome. Punisher and Winter Soldier might have an odd dynamic, though, in my opinion. I feel like Frank needs a straight and narrow anchor. I don't think that Bucky can really provide that. I'd love for him to have a love interest, though. Do some of the same things they did in season two of the, I'm guessing, of the Punisher show, just destroying everyone in his path to save her. 
I yeah. thought he was. I thought he was going to say Punisher should start going out with Winter Soldier, which would be really <laughs> progressive. That would be an odd dynamic. No, I agree. I think that if if anybody was to be his, you know, guiding force or whatever, it would have to be Falcon more than more than Winter Soldier. But or it could be both. Yeah, there was not like enough. Angel. There was some. There was some Nazi killing in season two of Punisher, but it was not the Punisher doing the Nazi killing, mm -hmm. which upset me because I just wanted to see the Punisher kill Nazis. That's all I've ever That's really wanted. That's a good point, though. If it was a buddy cop movie or buddy cop series, what is Punisher's foil? Who is Punisher's foil? I think my idea, I'm not crazy about this, is Hawkeye. Mr. Rogers. Because I love that Hawkeye in that five year period kind of turned dark so i could see punisher as fully committed to dark and hawkeye is like he thinks that's where he should be going but maybe not you know but i don't know that that really fits up with the timeline but i like the idea of it could be, the foil not being an opposite but somebody who thinks they want to be dark like the punisher but they can't really hack it couldn't it be well if it's a buddy thing if they paired him up with hawkeye it could be like hawkeye's gone down that path of darkness and he knows where it leads and he's you know trying to convince Punisher of that. I don't know. Right, it could so be, yeah. it could be an interesting dynamic, but... He got messed up in the war. Yeah. I'm trying to think who who else. I don't know if there's anyone else in the current Oh, I'm trying to think. Setup. Um, um, Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman's character. Oh, yeah, in Black Panther? He's, 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 no, not... He's not that violent, right? Like, he's not, like, a bad CIA guy. He's just a CIA guy. Is that right? I'm yeah. trying to remember what he's done. Yeah. He's failing upwards. So I'm just yeah. wondering if, like, if you pair him up with Punisher and Punisher starts going loose and then Martin Freeman's like, what are you doing? You can't do that. And Punisher's like, this is the only way things get done. Mm -hmm. That could be an interesting dynamic. Like, a, well, like a I, handler. Yeah. If you're, if you're bringing him in from the TV show, I don't think he's going to fall into any typical governmental structure like i don't know mm -hmm. at what point he would interact with like thunderbolt ross or any of the like yeah. government characters we've come to know from the movies because he's he's already well outside that established unless yeah. they did like a like a marvel's suicide squad where they somehow have recruited him off the streets for yeah. some sort of stupid mission but you'd have to give him some sort of it? some motivation or reason to interact with these people. Because mm -hmm. season one is him trying to figure out who killed his family. And then season two is kind of dealing with the fallout from that. Mm -hmm. um, and him like taking this young girl under his wing who's fallen into bad circumstances and finding himself in like a father figure kind of role because his family's dead and now he has a surrogate daughter taxi driver got it mm -hmm. um yeah that's an interesting question though because i don't think punisher solo punisher solo would work as a first punisher movie but i feel like he's got to pair up with people and he doesn't just slot in as an avenger you know? no so there's a lot of creative room there maybe with i was gonna say black widow but uh she i don't did. want any more prequels yeah Put him with the Hulk. Just call it a day. So Prince, Prince Corvax brings up good with anyone. Uh, in the show that, that he did have some government involvement as like a black op. So I could see that, you know, where they yes. twist him a little bit to get him to do what they want. Yeah, he did. He was he was dealing with, um, man, I forget the, forget the agent. But yes, and it was like off the books type stuff. But it was because it was also forwarding his own interests as well as like he's yeah. in the government's interest briefly aligned and so he's like okay i'll go along with this for now oh i just love it when he punches people <laughs> it's a john bernthal man i love it so much Good. he's just like a force of nature a great bear of a man i'm not a fan <clears throat> well you know i didn't no, like him he's always perfect did, so. Oh, yeah, I remember that show. What show? I missed it. I don't remember. Walking Dead. Walking Dead. The show that had a great first season, and then for the second season, AMC said, hey, do twice as many episodes, and we're giving you half as much money. And also, we might fire Frank Darabont. And Frank Darabont was like, you can go to hell. <laughs> Why would anybody fire Frank Darabont? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. 
Prince says John Barenthal as Kylo Ren. <laughs> that's not uh, bad. He's, I think I think he's a what? little. He could what? be like an older. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, an older Kylo Ren. <laughs> no, no, younger Kylo Ren. Kylo Ben. The flashback of him in the Jedi Temple. <laughs> it's just inexplicably John Bernthal. <laughs> That's kind of like. like how, um, about we, how, how about we hire John Bernthal and then digitally de age him? <laughs> you know who was a surprise Star Wars character that I actually really liked? Bill Burr in uh, Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. Mandalorian. Yeah, that worked really well. I didn't care for that episode. He had that I don't predator know turret on his shoulder yeah. that I liked. And he didn't he didn't change his shtick that much, but somehow it's like slotted into Star Wars real well. It's, it's weird. I love Bill Burr. All right, well, he, so here's a follow up question: What are we thinking about those rumors of uh, Boba Fett in season two? I Boba Fett, Boba Fett, Boba Fett. One of the things about Whoa! Mandalorian that confused me was that. They didn't they already tease Boba Fett for like one episode, but it was like three episodes before the end, and then he doesn't show up again at all. It was the end of the Tatooine? Yes. Yeah, I don't know if it's Tatooine. I think his feet showed up in the episode. Yeah, with and, him and the the surrogate Han Solo. Yeah, and then there was yeah. like there was like two or three more episodes after that, but they never went back to that tease, and it was like, what are you, what are you doing? You just dropped a tease and then forgot about it. You know, it was really weird. He's yeah. gonna. He's actually gonna be the Mandalorian for season two. That's that's oh, the boy. surprise. They're well, doing away with Pedro Pascal. Just because I've heard some interesting, um, of course, theories on it that like suppose I think there's either a comic or a book or something where Jango Fett is not part of like the Mandalorian culture. He just mm -hmm. took the armor from somebody. Yeah. And so Boba Fett also is not like a part of the culture, so it's possible that it's not movie Boba Fett. It's just somebody who found the armor and is well, I, wearing it now. Oh yeah, yeah, that could be. I, I think I'm okay with that. I, tr I I enjoyed Mandalorian enough to trust them with with Boba Fett. So. In the supposed Taika Waititi Star Wars movie that's mm, on the way. Oh, uh, that's kind of exciting. Yeah, it's exciting, but I'm also not sure. Because they just keep pulling me back. Does, uh... Are they gonna? Because it feels like he's the type of person that could run into the same issues that Phil Lord and Chris Miller did. Yeah, and even or well, Disney's well, like, that's mm. that's if Kathy Kennedy renews her contract in 2021. Yeah. Oh, sure. So sure. it may not even be in production by that point. Well, because but he's also already got Thor under his belt, so he's not mm. like an unknown entity production-wise. To and he's got an Oscar now. So yeah. Yeah, I feel like um, he's got clout mm -hmm. from not only working with Marvel, but, you know, he's got an Oscar. And also, uh, there's, what is it? Um, Kevin Feige is possibly doing a Star Wars movie. Yeah, I saw, oh, that. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Which, I mean, if he's going to do a Star Wars movie, no one is going to tell him what to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, there's no way Kathleen Kennedy can be like, I think we should do this. And he's just going to be like, no. I, I'm not a I'm not a big Kathy Kennedy in this decade fan. And I liked her better as a producer rather than a uh, president of a franchise of a multi-billion-dollar corporation. Yeah. So much money. Can you imagine getting a check for four billion dollars for an idea that you had in the seventies? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you made. We should it. we should do some LSD and find out what happens. <laughs> Go back to the early 1970s. Write a script that no one except Fox will buy. <laughs> I actually crucial. I remember um, watching uh, yesterday, and which has such a good premise. Like mm -hmm. the premise of that movie is just so good. Oh, yeah, and, I remember and, watching the first trailer and being like, "Why didn't I think?" <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, I also really, Russia? I also really said yesterday. But yeah, what if? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I just remember thinking, like, what if any popular movie franchise didn't exist? Like, would I be able to create it and sell it? Like, like mm -hmm. how how far down the process could I get if I like 
if it was exactly the same like like there's so many things that had to line up to make certain films successful so maybe if you pick like an indie film that got really popular that came out of nowhere that would be mm-hmm. easier than trying to create a franchise on its own with no like prior backing but yeah. I, it's such a such an interesting idea then they kiss but they've been like brother and sister the whole movie <laughs> but now they kiss and then and then uh there's a whole bunch yeah, of ghosts. You're having to explain Star Wars <laughs> knowing in the back of your head. So you're like, yeah, and then there's this scene in, in Empire Strikes Back, and they'll do this. And knowing what you know, what, but they don't know. Well, that's like um, in Back to the Future. Disney didn't want to buy the, the... They didn't want to produce the movie because it was about incest. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. s- straight up, like part of the script deals with incest mm. and then i who was it universal or paramount i forget who did that movie I but I, I know i read an interview with one of the producers of the film and they were like yeah no they just didn't care <laughs> they were like they, they were like totally down with it they just because they didn't think it was going to make any money but and then palpatine comes back but out of nowhere <laughs> and we'll say something like the dead speak uh, and we're going to announce it in a in a video game event. Yeah. You guys don't know about this yet, yeah. but that'll be yeah. really popular in several oh, years. Boy. Also, they banned they banned droids from reading Sith. I don't know if you know that, <laughs> but it totally happened. And now so we're making it part of the story. coordinates into a knife. I think that would line up with, with the, the wreckage with the wreckage of a thing that hasn't been destroyed yet. <laughs> I think. Let I, me. I, I, yeah. And waves don't move it. There's no such thing as waves moving There's things. There's no degradation. 30 years and the structure has not degraded at it all. Safe. It looks ancient. <laughs> I think my favorite part of Rise of the Skywalker, or whatever that movie was called. Is it Rise of Skywalker? The Skywalker? Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Ugh, it's such a bad movie title. Uh, and a bad movie. Um, is that I feel like Rise of I feel like it's the last straw that has finally made everybody realize that, hey, maybe J.J. Abrams is not good. You know? It's, <laughs> okay, I will I will defend JJ Abrams if he's not writing the script. If he's just yeah. if he's just directing, so, he's a I could good see that. director. He's I not a good writer. What is he? Um, what he's directed but not written. So uh, Force Awakens, Star Trek? Lawrence Kasdan and uh, Jonathan and JJ. Kasdan. Oh, did he write or did he have like story by? No, did he write he, Star Trek? I think he the original Star Trek. No, Wasn't the that... 2009 one. I'm not sure if he wrote. No, that's what I mean. The original remake. Uh, I've got um, I've got IMDb up. I'll, I'll pull it up real quick. Kelvin timeline. Isn't it Alex Kurtzman? And... Alex Kurtzman is the showrunner on the new TV shows, and yeah, I think yeah. he's a producer of the movies too. Oh, Damon Lindelof, didn't he write? The... Okay, here's what here's he really? to do with here's what um, Abrams has written. I'm going in reverse chronological order. Uh, Rise okay. of Skywalker is screenplay and story by. Force Awakens is Oof. written by. Uh, and then he has Fringe, Undercovers, a bunch of Lost. Fringe is good. No, Lost. nothing on Star Trek. Alias, Mission Impossible Three, written by. That makes sense. That's a bad movie. That's, That's movie. Felicity. I like that movie. That movie is so bad. It ends with 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 Ethan Hunt getting married, and the rest of the series just tries to ignore that as much as possible because it doesn't make <laughs> sense at all for the two. character. No, that's three. He got married. It's three. Gets, no, two is the worst. Gets, two is the worst. He gets married in the middle of the movie at the hospital. Yeah, but it's and still his wife. But like having her in the movie period does not make sense for his character. And literally the rest of the series just tries to ignore that she exists as much as possible. Does Seymour Hoffman she, kill her? Yeah, she's no, like she's in, alive. She has a she's at the very end of Ghost Protocol. When it's revealed, he, she's like the crux of why he does what he does in the she's, rest of the she's film. She's all part of Fallout. She's yeah. heavily in Fallout. No, she's not. Yeah. She's oh, not yeah, heavily she in Fallout. Fallout. She just shows up at the end. Yeah. Of Fallout, but no, he, she, he dreams of her. And he's she's the, like, the very like, first scene. But no, I'm not. I'm not saying that, she's that not in the T2 series. But but the flashback. point is, in three, like three is all about him and this girl, and he's like, I've got to protect her. She's my wife now. And then at the end, then four is immediately like. Oh no, she died. We're cutting her out. It doesn't make sense at all for this character to have a wife because he's basically supposed to be somebody who can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and it doesn't make sense for him to have a wife. And she comes in occasionally as a storyline, but it's such a bad plot point to tie that character, that free-for-all character, to a wife. It's like giving James Bond a wife. It doesn't make sense. Well, but they're but they're trying to humanize him, and I, I think for Darty, it works. I mean, I, I sort of work, like though. that. 
It, it but if you think of three, four, and f uh, five ish, and six as like, like ignore the first two Mission Impossible movies. There's like, it one, rounds its it rounds itself out. One is really good. Two is the worst. I hate the second. Two, Mission two, Impossible. two is one. two is very different. It's good it's in John its own Woo. way, but it's very it's different. Like, Woo. It's very different. Yeah. I just don't like slow mo. Motorcycle. Like sixty percent of the time. So yeah, that's <laughs> every time. Um, um, I don't know. But it's I, just I, I I can't trust three because that that wife had just made little sense, and then the rest of the series is like trying to write her. Like literally, three ends with him being like, "Hey guys, this is my wife," and everybody's like, "Yay, congratulations!" And then it does like a freeze frame fade out of them, and you're like, "Oh, I guess I'm happy that he got married now." And then four immediately starts with like, "She's dead. She's gone. Forget about it." Like it just is like a rewrite. And it's hilarious that that misstep happened in the series and they just try and like ignore it as much as possible the rest of the time. Well, but they don't, they don't, I don't know. In the, in Ghost Protocol, I actually thought it was the most subtle of like her relationship because at the very end, like you're led to believe that she's dead and all these different characters like further that storyline. And then at the end, it's revealed what actually happened. And it's like he grew as a character enough to know that what he wanted in the previous movie wouldn't be possible without without putting her in danger yes. and it's like i, I think it's to... i think it's very good writing to accommodate for it but three has none of that three is just like oh we've got to have something to drive him let's get him a wife character that he has to protect like three has none of the context that you're talking about four and five accommodate for that bad mistake for that bad writing but i don't i don't I don't I, I don't agree with that at all. I mean, I think she was a, a solid character in the third one, and she is the impetus of his character growth in the other three movies. And the uh, reveal that she's still alive in Fallout to him is pretty good. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty good. And remarried. Uh, what? That's right. Spoilers. To, Fallout spoilers. To the guy uh, from The Hunger Game. But yeah, I think I think J.J. Abrams is just... He feels like... Like, I remember going all the way back to Super 8 and Star Trek when he was getting all this stuff, and everybody's like, J.J. Abrams is involved. And I was like, all he's done is do a little bit of writing, a little bit of directing and production on, like, Lost and Alias, which are series that are well, kind of half and show, half in terms of good or not delivery. Yeah, and Cloverfield. Oh, but it was one of those things where it felt like all of a sudden people were giving J.J. Abrams more credit yeah, than he deserved. I, yeah, I agree. And it feels like Rise of Skywalker is people finally realizing, oh, we gave him too much credit. I I guarantee you, if Chris Terrio had not written Rise of Skywalker, had not been on the writing team, if they had gotten an actual person who knows like how to write words properly, um, putting them in an order that makes sense, yeah, it would have been like it would have been a different story. Chris Terrio is like cancer. I don't know, but but I, isn't isn't J.J. Abrams, a lot of J.J. Abrams, and you see this in a lot of his quotes, are like, it's not about, the mystery is not about the solution. It's about the feeling of the mystery. And I feel like a lot of Rise of Skywalker is that is trying to evoke feelings without having substance behind it. Yeah, yeah but that's, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's his shtick. Don't let him have control over that. Yeah, yeah. Just put him, put him in as director to write somebody else's script. Lawrence Kasdan back. Yeah, I don't think he wanted to do it. <laughs> I don't think so. But yeah, even especially if, like, after Last Jedi, like, yeah. How do you wrap that? Like he and if like How do you he wrap and Ryan Johnson movie? had co-written something, just so it would have some more coherency in terms of plotting. Yeah. But I think it. I think it definitely ultimately falls on probably Kathleen Kennedy because it's like if you're shepherding this trilogy and you know you're going to have different writers and different directors for each of the movies, you're making that deliberate decision. You need to have some sort of overarching thing, and that yeah, was. You need I, I don't think that Kevin was. Feige. Yeah, I don't think that was ever, ever there. Or if it was, it was yeah. way too late with way too little power behind it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there, there's the fact that that was revealed when Ryan Johnson was like, "Yeah, they just let me like make my movie," and it was like, "That's <laughs> awesome for you, yeah, but not for the franchise. Not for the franchise. Yeah, that is." That's so bonk. That's so bonkers because there's all this like setup in Force Awakens and stuff, and it's like how, literally thrown off a cliff. How stupid do you have to be? It's I think it's like I think it's not necessarily stupidity, but just confidence. Where you're like, 
it's Hollywood. People watch trash every day and pay for it. So it, we, we don't have to go to a high standard here. We just have to get good people, let them do what they need to do, and we'll be okay. Oof. It has been two hours. Uh, yeah, you guys want to yeah, start just thinking that. wrapping it up? Um, yeah. yeah, I've only got a couple of things. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've kind of run out of vomit. So I think, <laughs> I, I think, you know, depending on how you guys are feeling, I think we just do one more episode next week, and then we call it a solid five episodes of Subpixel Land. How does that sound? Uh, yeah, it's pretty good to me. We're at 3775, at least on my version of the game. What if we try to get to 5,000? That's possible. Maybe, but we've uh, only... I kind of wanted to look up things that pull people into your parks. Yeah, because we've only Magnets. grown we've only grown 1,000 in this stream. But I almost wonder if, like, if we had money, if we could do, like, advertising campaigns yes. that would... Like, yes. I want to know the, what yes. brings you people in more. You can run ad campaigns in the, in, the ca in the campaign missions where you are bringing in money. You can do ad campaigns. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know you can, but we, we can't. So I, we don't I, have I'm wondering if, SEO stuff. if that does anything. <laughs> Yeah. versus what we're already doing yeah um so I, I don't think we need to do a tour of the park but let's just uh let's go around the horn and uh see where people can find you i'll start from the top i'm ian you can find me on twitter at think gibson jake where can people find you uh on twitter at underscore jake terio soundcloud jake terio music instagram at underscore mean mean stride and kyle where can people find you twitter and instagram at kyle of the beard and will where can people find you yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. And folks, you can find all of us and all of our Subpixel content at subpixelfilms.com. We've got some great stuff up there. We've got documentaries on Epidesis, on uh, arcades inside of Bank Vaults, Iceland Game Jams, Halo CE Mod Community. We've also got videos going up all the time, like our latest Spotlight video, which came out on Monday. What was that topic, uh, Jake? It was on Minecraft, I believe. Oh, I mean, I edited it. It was Will's video, but yeah, it was about looking back on on alpha minecraft will you yeah. want to talk more about it i hated it and then i <laughs> loved it that's great so if you want to know more about that you can find that at subpixelfilms.com that takes you right to our youtube channel if you're more interested in our streams our hot social media jokes or anything like that you can follow us on twitch facebook mixer instagram and twitter at subpixel team uh, we do have another stream coming up. I believe the next scheduled stream is Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be playing. Let's announce it so we can box ourselves in before we've tech tested it. What are we playing, Will? We're playing Mario Party over the internet. Wow! Mario Party 2. Wow! It's going to be crazy. I'm, I'm very, very yeah. excited for it. Um... But other than that, I think it's going to do it for us. I think we're feeling pretty good. I'm going to say one more, at least one more episode next week. So if you want to watch only Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, we're going to have that next Thursday. But we do stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, Mixer, and YouTube. Folks, if you've made it this far, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you can, we'd really appreciate it if you could like, comment, follow, subscribe, hit the bell, do the thumbs up, thumbs down, interact in any way you can with this video. It does two things for us. It uh, tells me, in particular, I don't care about the rest of you three, it tells me that this content's good and we should make more <laughs> stuff like it. And it also tells the uh, great algorithm gods, as dictated by Fiat, by President Donald J. Trump, that our stuff is good and it should be promoted more. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much going to do it for us tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching. Gentlemen, thank you for joining. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.